Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto bankrupts Konoha Council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Wolf and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Naruto. Prisoner AK 786273. Prisoner number. AK 786273. Prisoner name. Namakas Uzumaki Naruto. Date of birth age. October 10, 30 years old. Blood type. D. Crimes. Classified. Sentence. 100 years for good behavior, 200 years standard. Note by Rakudame Hokage. Parole at earliest possible chance. Notes. Prisoner is prone to extreme violence when bothered, coupled with the Kaiubi no Yoko, or Karama as the prisoner refers to it, the prisoner is to be approached with extreme caution. Several Iwa prisoners tried to attack the prisoner during their mandatory time with their chakra unshackled, and the prisoner's was not. The prisoner saw fit to in his words give his cell a fresh coat of red paint, the bodies still have not been fully recovered. Mentioning the Kaiubi no Yoko as anything but Karama also results in a violent reaction from the prisoner. It should be noted that whenever someone ever calls the Kaiubi no Yoko anything but Karama that the prisoner calls on the Kaiubi no Yoko's chakra. This is also the only time that the prisoner draws upon the demon's chakra, even with the heavy suppression seals. When the prisoner first arrived at age 12, he broke free from his escort and took on Iwa prisoner Natarkatsweki. In the minute it took for the prisoner to be restrained once more, Natarkatsweki was dead. Redirect to the medical file of the deceased for details. It should be noted that at the time Natarkatsweki was the boss of most of the prison inmates. He used his size and reputation from the third ninja war to bully individuals, and those that crossed him were killed. Psychological profile. The prisoner is rather calm and stays to himself, even in general population. So long as his boundaries are not pressed against, he has shown to be one of the best behaved inmates. Curiously the prisoner has no intention of being paroled, instead choosing to skip parole hearings altogether to ensure that he is not given a parole. During his mandatory day where he is allowed chakra, he is placed into solitary confinement and usually summons the toad named Gamakichi for conversation. It should be noted that during this time with his summon, the prisoner chooses to use his influence to get snacks for the toad. The prisoner also uses this time to test several high-level seals, most of which have been patented and are sold in Konoha. The prisoner is the richest known inmate. The prisoner also uses this time to test various ninjutsu that he has been allowed to learn as good behavior. When questioned about how he is able to get so much done in a 24-hour time frame, the prisoner answers with just two words. Shadow clones. The woman closed the folder with a deep sigh, her chest rising and falling as she couldn't read the rest. Tears formed in her pale lavender-colored eyes as she pulled the folder closer to her chest. A black coat hung on her frame, hiding her rather developed figure as best as possible. A pair of snug blue pants was on her legs, but since her coat came to her mid-thigh, it was hard to tell how developed her hips were. Her long hair came down her back, it was a deep black color, and how the light hit it gave it the illusion of a dark midnight blue. A Kanoha headband was hung round her neck. Ichihasama. One of the guards asked, making the woman look up. We have the prisoner you requested. Bring him in please, and I would rather you not call me that. The woman said. I will endeavor to remember that, forgive me. The guard said. As the guard left, another set walked in, six in all. Between them was a large blonde man, which the woman hadn't seen in 18 years. He was broad-shouldered and looked to stand about 6'2 with his body covered in muscles from exercise. Not weightlifting as many prisoners did, instead they were from hard work. Chains encircled his hands and his waist, leading down to his legs and his feet. It made him walking an impressive feat. The woman's eyes went to his hands, scarred and roughed up. No doubt from training exercises that would have left a mutual friend green with envy. The blonde was led over to a chair and was sat in it before the guards looked to her for confirmation. She gave it, her eyes still locked on the blonde's deep cerulean eyes. The guards then left, not wanting to stay around the prisoner any more than they had to. His mere presence wanted to make her run. She could see that what would pass for tattoos to most were heavy amounts of ceiling, drawn or carved into his skin. Most of them were not standard issue for the prison. High the cerulean eyes looked her over, resting on her left hand, where there was a golden ring. She could see those eyes narrow, and the pupils turn to slits. Hi Ugasama. He said in a rather low and tight tone. It reminded her of a coiled predator, ready to strike on its prey. Please don't call me that. I never wanted to hear that from you of all people, please. She whispered softly, clutching the folder to her chest even tighter. The blonde scowled, but leaned back and put his hands under the table. Very well, Hinata-sama. The tightness in his voice was still there, and it made Hinata's heart break. 
The suffix added to her name also made her hurt. Prisoner 786273 of Wing A, cell block K of the Kanoha Maximum Security Prison. Your namak is Yuzumaki Naruto correct? She asked as a formality. Naruto knew the song and dance. I am. He said. He had done this several times before, but never with Hinata. He was still trying to figure out why she was there. On behalf of the Rakide Mhokage of Kanoha, I am here to acquire your services for Kanoha. Hinata produced several more folders, besides the one that had Naruto's information. Zetsu, made from the cells of Senju Hashirama by Ichiha Madara, Hinata, slid the folder along the table to Naruto's side. There are an unknown number of these, but we have yet to find the brain of the Zetsu who would be the one to kill. If we can find and kill him, then the rest will be unorganized and easier to deal with. Naruto tilted his head and looked at the folder. Roku huh? Can't be that crippled Danzo, he should have kicked the bucket by now. So who is the Roku? Naruto asked. Hada Kakashi, your sensei. Hinata answered, surprising Naruto briefly. She pulled a second folder from the group and slid it over, beside the Zetsu folder. Ichiha Madara, founder of the Ichiha clan. Kept himself alive by cancelling the Ido Tensei technique that Yukushi Kabuto used to revive him. He has been around for about 15 years now. Naruto tilted his head, looking at a picture of the passive face of Ichiha Madara. Even more confusing was Madara had the Rinnegan. Naruto hoped there was an explanation to that one later, but he didn't particularly care at the moment. Who'd you marry? Naruto asked straightforward. No one would ever accuse him of being subtle, and that was the way he liked it. Naruto-kun, please don't ask that of me. Hinata whispered softly, clutching her hands to her chest tightly. Do. Naruto asked more firmly, looking up at Hinata now. Hinata inhaled deeply and exhaled. Ichiha Itachi. Seventeen years ago he was pardoned of all crimes against Konoha when the truth of the Ichiha rebellion came out. Shortly after, his brother, Ichiha Sasuke, ran from Konoha once more unable to handle the fact Itachi was a hero. I went to Itachi and requested to be one of his wives. She said looking down, closing her eyes. I didn't want another man to touch me, no one, but Yunarito kun and Itachi was willing to give me that. He hasn't ever touched me. Tsunade Sama married us about 14 years ago when I was removed from my position of heiress and was close to being sealed into the branch house. Naruto leaned back a bit. The ring made a bit more sense now, and he was glad to see Hinata's forehead clean of that ugly seal. How did you manage to keep from being found out? While Shizune Sama was head of the hospital she forged a files saying I was sterile and unable to bear Itachi's children. Sakura-san has continued this lie when she took over as head of the hospital. Hinata said with a bit of hope that Naruto wouldn't judge her for what she needed to do. Hinata decided to continue. Ichiha Sasuke, one of two survivors of Itachi's cleansing of the Ichiha clan. He ran away and has thus been affiliated with several known enemies of Konoha. Akatsuki and Arachimaru to name a few. Last spotted five years ago. Considered to be a higher ranked, low S rank shinobi. Hinata slid the folder forward, and Naruto looked at the shifted eyes of the person whom he had considered a brother for a long time. Naruto snorted and leaned back in his chair a bit. These are Kanoha's problems. They're not mine. What's in it for me? He asked as he looked across the table to the woman who had plagued his thoughts for years. Your services are acquired. You will be reinstated to a proper rank within Kanoha's forces after a test rendered by the Rakudame Hokage. You will also be absolved of all crimes against Kanoha up to the date of the defeat of all of Kanoha's enemies. You will be given a plot of land and a house that rests upon it, and you will be given the chance to start your own clan if you so wish. Hinata said diplomatically as she rested her hands on the table. She wished she could activate her by Akigen, but there were dozens of seals in the room to keep Naruto's power in check that also hampered her own abilities. She could still channel chakra to her fingertips to put Naruto down if she had to. You are the container for the Kaiubi no Yoko Kurama, and as such you are the shield to Konoha. Please Naruto-kun. Naruto laughed briefly, shaking his head. I willingly let myself be captured, sealed up, tried, and imprisoned for an indefinite amount of time. He brought his hands up onto the table, slamming all the shackles down on the table that had held his hands together, his legs together, and several seals shattered on his body and around them. What makes you think I couldn't leave at any time I so choose? Hanada pulled out one more folder and tossed it over on top of every other one. Ichiha Abito, the masked man of the Akatsuki, and the cause of Kurama's attack 30 years ago. His action killed your parents, forced you to bear the burden so soon in life, and is the reason you were hated without knowing of your burden for 12 years. Hanada whispered. He's the ringleader of the group. Naruto picked up the folder, not believing his eyes or his ears. Abito was the one that was the cause behind Kurama being sealed inside of him. But Abito's words, the words Kakashi had taught Team 7 so many years ago, were things he lived by. Abito had abandoned not only his comrades, but his sensei. Naruto felt his rage boiling, his anger building. 
Inada could see the anger in Naruto's body, and in that moment she was truly afraid for her life. She had no idea how Naruto had gotten so strong or so dangerous, but there was only one thing she was sure of. Naruto was more dangerous than the rest of their graduating class and Guy's former team combined. I expect I'll be out by the end of the day. Naruto said, indirectly agreeing to the bargain. Revenge sounded so sweet to him, he would deliver Abito's other eye to Kakashi. Have the rest of our group, what you can at least, meet us outside the prison. I want to see how much they have changed. Naruto said looking down at the folders. He stood up and stormed out of the room. Inada looked up to the door, both with hope and a bit of fear. Naruto had changed drastically. But what could she honestly expect? It had been close to 20 years since he had been imprisoned. He had not offered a word of resistance, he had not offered an ounce of fight. She could hardly believe it was he that did that crime 18 years ago. But he had admitted to it in excruciating detail. And he wasn't under a jinjutsu, subtle or otherwise. Inoichi had even dived into his mind to make sure that Naruto wasn't being controlled. No one could look at him without thinking of a few choice words. Monster, demon, and butcher. Naruto headed back to his cell, the guard smart enough to not even come close to touching him. Once there, he stripped out of the more ragged version of his prison clothes and took a shower. His body was tense and he didn't want to relax. Soon though, the scalding hot water did its work, pouring over his body to allow him some clarity. As he stepped out and looked into a mirror, a towel was wrapped around his waist, he could see a more feral version of himself in the mirror with red slit eyes. You said you would no longer be their puppet Naruto. Kurama told him in their method of conversation. And I won't be their puppet. Naruto said grabbing his plastic razor and beginning to shave off the slight amount of blonde stubble adorning his chin and jaw. Yet they come running to you, needing our power, and you say yes to the pretty little girl. She betrayed you Naruto. She married someone else. You think I don't know that? Naruto asked, wincing as he cut himself and it instantly healed. However, my decisions are my own, my actions are my own. She has nothing to do with this. That masked man, Abito, he on the other hand Naruto gave a feral grin. I will enjoy ending him with all our might. He killed my parents, and I will end him for it. No Naruto, I killed your parents. You know this, I've told you the stories dozens of times to help you through solitary confinement when you've been locked in there. I did it with pride, and I would do it again. You have an idea of what it is like to be locked away, but my confinement has been and will always be worse. Kurama said with a slight snarl. I thought you'd be all for getting some revenge. Not vengeance, revenge. A more suitable and a darker action. Naruto said. I am more concerned with how easily you agreed to such a plan. They are making you out to be their puppet and you are simply going with it. They will not allow you to run long from a leash and once they have you leashed, it will only get shorter given who we are and what we have done. Then I will end them, simple as that. Naruto said and finished his shaving. He then wiped his face clean of the cream and began to get dressed in plain, standard issue orange boxers, a pair of sandals, and an orange jumpsuit. The idea behind the orange was that escapees would have difficulty hiding in the bright neon color. Too bad Naruto had already broken that rule before he had even arrived at the prison. He grabbed a shiv and used it to cut the sleeves off the jumpsuit before using his blood to write storage seals on the sleeves. He sealed away all the ninjutsu and tojutsu scrolls that Kakashi and Jiraiya had smuggled in for him. In the other sleeve, he sealed away all the pictures, information scrolls and books he had gotten from the two. He then used his shiv to dig into his hand, wincing a bit as he did so, and carving out a seal into his very skin. He then sealed away the two sleeves. It was the safest place he could think of. Naruto then pulled a string from where he had cut off the sleeves. He made sure to be careful with the string until he got several inches with it, almost a foot long. He drew his long wet hair back and tied it off with a string, focusing his chakra into the string to make it strong and near unbreakable by conventional means. His hair wouldn't be escaping anytime soon. Naruto regarded himself in the mirror one last time, looking at his older face. Prison had taken its toll on him. He had lines over his face from where he had frowned too long, scowled too long, or just did anything. When the business with Abito was done, he knew he was coming back. Naruto turned and walked out of his cell and was escorted out towards the front of the prison. Some of the prisoners were whispering, accusing him behind his back. He grinned a bit as he heard the whispers. He began to hum a bit, the low and slow tune causing his guards to shudder. They knew that tune. It was when he was planning something downright evil. At the entrance to the prisoner, Naruto saw Hinata and his sadistic grin did not falter. It did not grow, but it didn't falter in the least, nor did he stop humming his tune. He watched a shiver run through her lovely body and walked past her and through the doors to the outside for the first time in 18 long, long years. The guards then backed away to the safety of the prison, knowing where the butcher was not, they would be better off. Naruto glanced at the assembled group as Hinata walked out behind him. 
There are five missing. Sasuke is a missing nin, so where is Lee, Niji, Kiba, and Shikamaru? Naruto asked noticing the five missing. A woman with brown hair cut to the middle of her back stepped up. She had a large scroll strapped across the small of her back and she had the standard jonin look. Blue pants, gray top, and a green flak jacket. Her headband was around her head. Naruto also took note of the wedding band on her right hand. A widow. Lee is officially a special jonin, unofficially, he's one of Hokage-sama's bodyguards in Anbu. Naruto gave a slight sound at hearing what happened to Lee. Thanks Tintin. He said simply in acknowledge to the weapon using Jonin's words. The heavier set man with orange spiky hair stepped up and Naruto was actually looking him in the eyes. Naruto didn't often have someone of equal height to look to. He also wore a crimson armor and held a spear in his hand. Naruto noted a wedding band on the large man's left hand. Choji got big. Shika made it to Jonin commander, like his father before him, and is in a meeting with Hokage-sama at the moment. Next to speak up was a lean man in a black trench coat with a high collar and a hood pulled up over his hair. He also had a set of sunglasses over his eyes, making him one of the more obscure individuals of the group. Naruto mentally shook his head. Shino had changed the least. Kiba-san is out of the village on a mission with his team at the moment. I would recommend not provoking him when he returns Naruto-san. Kiba-san has been through a trying time, and even still the wound is fresh. Hinata spoke up. Akamaru died protecting him Naruto-kun. Hinata said. It took Shoji-kun, Shino-kun, and me all to get him and Akamaru's body out of there. Naruto bowed his head a bit. He and his family have my condolences. Naruto said softly. While he and Kiba never particularly got along, he understood the importance of the dogs to the Inuzuka clan. You still haven't said about Niji. Hinata looked down, as did Tenten. Niji Nai-san, he died. He was most vocal when I was about to be branded with the caged bird seal. One of the elders at the time he used the seal on Niji until he died. Naruto bowed his head again, remembering the Hayuga. Naruto particularly remembered when he dislodged a stick from Niji's ass. Finally, after a bit, Naruto looked to Hinata and Tenten. You both have my condolences. He said. It was easy to tell why Tenten had a ring on her right hand now. Naruto then glanced at the rest of the group. Get me up to speed. Tell me who is where in ranks and relationships. Naruto said. Naruto had a simple plan, first go eat some good ramen, second go get a hard drink, and third go get laid. Simple plan, but he didn't want to get in the pants of anyone that was taken. Asuma sensei has died years ago. Choji said and bowed his head. I'm the current clan head for the Akamichi clan, so I'm a jonin, and Ino-chan is my wife. Choji dragged Ino forward a bit. Naruto glanced at the rather slim-looking woman in purple. Ino hadn't particularly changed much, except she regrew her hair after the chunin exams years ago. All in all, Ino made for a relatively hot wife for Choji. I'm the current head of the Yamanaka clan, though it was difficult to keep my position with being Choji-kun's wife. Ino said, almost cuddling up to her husband's arm. Sakura was next to step up. Her hair had grown out to the middle of her back, but it seemed she tied it back. She wore a pink vest with a pair of jonin pants. Her eyes also looked harder, better. She wasn't the weak fangirl from 18 years ago. I'm the head of the hospital, Tsunade Sama taught me everything she could, including her super strength techniques. I'm seeing a civilian boy right now. No doubt you heard about Kakashi Sensei's new position. He's also married to Anko. Naruto was tempted to snort. More likely Sakura had intimidated the boy with her strength. I too am a jonin and the current head of the Aburam clan. Kurinai Sensei is Asuma's widow and the mother of their child. She is retired. Shino said simply. I'm a jonin and as you guessed, Niji Kun's widow. I also took over at the shop for my dad. Guy Sensei Guy Sensei's leg got hurt about 10 years ago and he's been medically discharged, Tenten said. Naruto nodded. I need a Kusurigama. Naruto said addressing Tenten. I want it made fully from the chakra conductive material. Tenten blinked, wondering what Naruto would need a weapon like that for. On second thought, she decided against asking. She had seen photos of what Naruto had done. Sure how heavy do you want it? Naruto shrugged. As heavy as you can make it. Also, don't put any seals in it. I have a few ideas about that myself and I want a clean workstation. Tenten nodded before bowing a bit. Excuse me then. She said and took off. Naruto shook his head. She's afraid as are the rest of you. He said looking at the others that stiffened uncomfortably. Naruto grinned almost sadistically. Don't be ashamed. I want all of you afraid. Naruto said. Sakura spoke up. Naruto, we we just want to know why you did what you did all those years ago they. Naruto shot her a glare. They deserved it. End of story, not up for discussion. What I did was between me, them, and Tsunade Bachan. Last I heard she died so I doubt you'll get information out of her. And you won't get the information out of me. Now if you'll excuse me. 
I'm hungry and I remember a certain Raymond stand that could quell my stomach. Naruto then left the group, heading through Konoha. Of course he got distrustful looks, given his rather rougher appearance. It was good. He wanted them afraid of them now, to hell with their acknowledgement. Naruto wanted fear, it would keep him from being attacked. It was a simple idea he had during his time in prison, and he would continue to enforce that idea. Naruto stopped at a bank and checked on his account information. He had billions of Ryo. Pure and simple, he was the richest son of a bitch in Konoha. Jiraiya's assets were his since his godfather was dead, and Naruto continued the Icha Icha series. Add the successful book series to the seals he made while he was in prison, and several successful investments, and you had a man worth more money than he cared to count. Naruto had nothing but time while he had been in prison. Despite their thoughts, he had always had his chakra. With several shadow clones reading up on business, and he quickly learned the ins and outs of being a good businessman. Naruto invested into everything he thought was a worthwhile venture, and he always got about double his money back. Second thing Naruto invested in was bonds. Konoha needed to make money obviously, and offered bonds. They also got a nice little bit of income from the daimyo, but to be honest, bonds were how Konoha made serious money. Bonds gave the village money to invest into programs or deal with war. Being a ninja village, bonds were always being bought so that the village could prosper and the civilian portion of the village would survive. Naruto bought his bonds in five-year increments ever since Jiraiya died. It may not seem like much, but Naruto bought hundreds of bonds. He bought so many in fact that a representative from the bank, Jiraiya's assets, and Konoha's government all had to come to the prison to talk to him. There, they were on Naruto's playground and it showed as he swayed things to his thinking. Then Naruto improved several defensive seals about the village, offered a few seals for practicality purposes, all sorts of seals were made for Konoha, all from a prisoner in his cell. Naruto liked money a lot, plain and simple. Naruto paused as he saw the unfamiliar building where the Raymond stand used to be and went to the door. Opening it, he was surprised to see a full restaurant, with several waiters and waitresses moving about to help with the orders. It seemed Ichiraku's Raymond had boomed over the years. Naruto moved to take his seat at the bar, the original bar from the little stand, though they had extended it around the expanded kitchen. It was a nice touch to keep the original bar, to show they had their humble roots. Naruto turned in his seat and looked up at a corkboard that had pictures hung up. Despite his reputation in the village and his current nickname, Tuchi or AM had kept the pictures up of his younger days. He looked at himself as he scarfed down bowl after bowl of ramen, much to Aruka's ire at the time. It brought a real smile to his face, a real one that he hadn't had in a long time. Excuse me sir, can I take your order? A man asked, causing Naruto to turn and see some young 16 or 17 year old behind the counter in an apron. Naruto debated ordering from the man. Is Aim or Tucci here? Naruto asked first and foremost. He wanted to see them, they who had been a help in his past. The man paused. Old man Tucci retired, he comes in every now and then, but most of the time it's Aim here. Would you like me to go get her? Naruto nodded. It would be appreciated. Tell her that her that her number one customer has returned after 18 years. She'll understand. Naruto watched as the waiter walked off and Naruto grabbed the menu. Naruto looked it over, flipping through the few pages. It was interesting seeing that his favorite Raymond stand had gotten more of a variety. Naruto. A female voice shouted and he was soon captured in a hug of death from behind. Naruto turned and saw the long brown hair and reached down. Am had grown up as well. He stroked her back a bit as he held her with one arm. Hey Am Nichan. Naruto said, sitting so he could get a better look at Aim. She had filled out nicely, and her face looked a little older. She brushed her hair behind her ear, and Naruto could see she had grown her hair out quite a bit. How have you been Naruto-kun? She asked with a bright smile, one that Naruto was glad to see. Naruto was a monster, a demon, a butcher. But for his precious people, like Aim, he could be human. Too bad the list of his precious people was incredibly small at the moment. Naruto shrugged in response to Aim's question. I'm alive, I'm rich, and I want some good ramen that I haven't had in years. He told Am simply. I'm also starving, so expect me to be eating huge quantities again. Naruto said a bit. Am chuckled a bit happily as she moved to go into the kitchen, putting an apron on and her hair up so it wouldn't be in her way. What can I get for you Naruto-kun? She asked as she got her pen and paper ready. Naruto smirked a bit. Ten bowls of beef, five bowls of chicken, and five bowls of shrimp, to start. Naruto said, his stomach letting out a mighty roar at the coming offering. People who heard him order looked absolutely stunned. One guy sitting near the bar actually spoke up. Can you even eat all that? Never mind pay for it. Naruto chuckled softly and tapped the pictures. Who do you think is in most of these? He asked with a smirk. As for paying, I could probably buy everyone's meal right now and not even make that big of a dent in my wallet. Naruto shrugged a bit. 
AM spoke up to her employees. We have a starving customer who has ordered. Hop to it. She shouted tapping a ladle against a metal pot. The kitchen was full of a hustle and bustle as AM and her employees began to work on filling Naruto's order. The second the first bowl was placed in front of him, Naruto began to eat at a quick and steady pace, even drinking the broth down. Bowl after bowl of ramen went into his stomach and Karama broke it down into raw energy that ended up being stored away inside various seals. Karama left enough for Naruto to feel full, but they were planning for various seals to be full of chakra before they went to Chiha hunting. After all 20 bowls in a little under an hour, Naruto stood up and paid for the meal. I'll see you later am Ni chan Keep the change. He told her as he walked out of the building. Naruto had feasted on ramen, a delicious delicacy in his mind, and now it was time to go get laid. It wasn't hard really, Kanoha had a red light district as most major cities would have. It wasn't hard to find a woman who had no real clue who he was, make a bet with her and show off his considerable stamina. He didn't have to pay because of the bet, he got laid, and he didn't get anything because Kurama wouldn't allow it. It was good to be king sometimes. Over a week, Naruto slowly integrated into his father's home, cleaning it and getting groceries back into the cupboards. Naruto also got his kusurigama. It had proven to be really, really heavy. He had given Tenten a smirk, enjoying the feel of the weighted weapon. He had it at the small of his back at all times, just under his shirt. He was walking through the village again when he ran into Kiba. Hey Naruto, that you it was a deep voice, deeper than Naruto knew. He turned to see an older Kiba, wearing a standard Jonin uniform as well, followed by three Chunin. Naruto paused, seeing that Kiba had an entire team of Inuzuka. Hey Mutt. Been a while huh? Naruto asked, holding out his hand. They both shook hands, and Naruto was pleased that Kiba stopped smelling so bad over the years. He must have finally learned how to use the shower. Yeah, it has. Prison has been good to you apparently. Kiba said offering a bit of a smirk. Naruto chuckled. Yeah, it was good for me. Taught me order and how to make a shit ton of money. Naruto looked at the three and Yuzuka Chunin. These your brats. Thibble looked back. Heh, yeah. They're my brats. I've trained them to be part tracking and part assault. All three want to enter Anbu, and unfortunately in Anbu they can't have their dogs, so I'm making them do missions without them. Naruto nodded for a moment, looking each of them over. Sensei, why does this man smell like a fox? The shortest, a girl, asked. Naruto smirked a bit more. I hold the Kaiubi no Yoko, Karama, within my gut. Naruto unzipped the jumpsuit to his navel and channel chakra, showing off the intricate seal which had a minimum of an inch of clean skin from the other seals. Naruto didn't want to risk anything with the containment seal. The three Chunin took a step back and Naruto laughed, full-hearted. He sobered after a while and looked to Kiba. Sorry to hear about Akimaru. He said. Kiba looked down. Yeah, not one of the better moments in my life. He said in a low tone. I, I don't mean to force it on you, but I started a fundraiser to try and get more vets trained in Akimaru's memory. Do you think Kiba trailed off? Naruto snorted. Yeah, sure. I like the little puppy anyways, he had a bigger bite than you did anyways. Naruto said as he pulled his checkbook out of his pocket and a pen. Naruto mused how much he should give. To Inuzuka Kiba, pay 750 million Ryo for his fundraiser to get vets trained. Naruto said and signed the check. The three Chunin looked between one another to the shocked Kiba and the nonchalant Naruto. Are you trying to make fun of our sensei? One of the males asked, each of them stepping into a lower stance, a fighting stance. Naruto laughed. You think I don't have the money? Tell me, when they gave you those vests, they were a bit big weren't they? He got three nods. And all they told you to do was channel chakra into it right? Three more nods. And they instantly fit to your body, perfectly without any flaws. Three more nods. And every time they get damaged, you just channel chakra into the vest and it gets repaired. Three more nods. I made the seals that do it. Every time a tune in vest is made, the seals are put into it and I get a bit of money. Naruto was suddenly behind Kiba, a very familiar but worn orange book in his hands. Kiba patted his equipment pouch. Hey, that's mine. Kiba said. I also happen to be the sole owner of this entire series. Including the movies. Do any of you know what it is? Naruto asked. He was amused when the female of the group blushed and slightly raised her hand. I've been in prison for 18 years brats, writing and letting interest pile up. I've also made sound investments. Naruto looked to Kiba. That was my good deed for the past 18 years. Naruto then turned to walk away, leaving the four Inuzuka behind. Kiba cursed, Naruto had his book. He then leveled a glare at all three of his charges. Never piss him off, ever. Don't challenge him. Even if any of you make it to the position of clan head, don't fuck with him. He'll stomp you all into the ground and make it look easy. But sensei, our teamwork is the final male started. Worth shit against him. He can summon an army for each of you. 
Can you imagine fighting a hundred cage level enemies at once? Kiba cut in without mercy. That shut his team up. Naruto headed towards the Hokage Tower, deciding to get the meeting that was no doubt taking place over with. How did he know a meeting was taking place without getting a summons to it? Before Naruto was incarcerated, meetings took place every Friday, mostly to talk about boring crap that politicians did. In emergency situations, the meeting could be cancelled or even have more days of meetings. He heard that when Kurama attacked, a meeting took place for a week with everyone arguing. Naruto approached the two Anbu stationed on guard at the door. Well, two visible Anbu. There were at least another half dozen around him, no doubt prepared. Namak is Uzumaki Naruto, the butcher of Konoha here to see the village council. Naruto said simply and one of the Anbu slipped inside. He could almost smell the fear from the seven remaining Anbu. They all knew no matter what they wouldn't be able to touch him before he killed them if he so wished. The Anbu came back relatively quickly and ushered Naruto in. He entered the room and looked around. He noticed Kakashi, dressed in the Hokage robes which amused Naruto. He noticed a few other shinobi in the room, more than what had been there for his last village meeting. Though the clan representative surprised him. Shikaku-sama, Inoichi-sama, Choza-sama, Shibi-sama, Tsum-sama, Hiyashi-sama, I was told there were new clan heads. Shibi spoke up. We found it most logical to give our children the position, however to relieve them of the duties of the council meetings and other lesser tasks that they needn't concentrate on until this war is over. For the forces of Konoha, they were needed to continue to train our other clansmen. Attending the meetings of the village council is something we were able to do to allow them to focus on training the other clansmen. Naruto nodded a bit and turned to look at the civilian council, which was understandably close to soiling themselves. Naruto then turned to the other ninja that were part of the council that hadn't been there during his last village meeting. Naruto paused and inhaled the air. Each of you three have the scent of sea water on you, faded but still there. So I take it you're the representatives for the survivors from Kiri's annihilation five years ago. The beautiful Ritid, looking to be approaching her fifty, spoke up. You would be correct. I am Turumi Mei, my associates Ao and Chijuro. The woman motioned to the two men behind her. Naruto gave a bit of a smirk. So the Gadi Mizukage did survive. Rumors of your beauty reached me in prison, and I have to say they didn't do you any justice. He looked away from her blush to look at the Rakudame Hokage. Yo. Kakashi said somewhat cheerfully, dispelling a bit of the bring tension. Got lost on the road of life Naruto. We were expecting you to be here last week. Naruto couldn't help it. The sheer audacity of that statement, the sheer hypocrisy of it just made him start laughing, as hard as he could, falling onto his knees and clutching his sides as he laughed until it hurt, surprising most of the council. Naruto eventually sobered up and moved over to Kakashi. Come here sensei. Naruto hugged the man. It's good to see you sensei, Naruto shook his head, wiping a bit of a tear away from laughing so hard. You've been saving that one for a while weren't you? Kakashi gave a sheepish eye smile and a shrug. What can I say? Those that really know me are amused by it when I ask it. Best damn joke I heard in 18 years. Naruto said before heading over to a prepared chair and sat down in it, facing the council and leaning back a bit. He closed his eyes briefly before they opened, and all amusement fled his face. Let's get down to business. I have demands to be met. How dare you make the merchant on the civilian side began to speak up before a weighted chain zipped past his face, blasting a hole through the wall behind it. Naruto's hand was still outstretched from where he threw the weight of his kusurigama at the fat man. You don't speak to me as though you are better than me. Naruto said his eyes flashing dangerously crimson. You have no idea the kind of hell I have been through, the blood I have shed in the name of this village. If anything, you should be kissing the ground I walk on and groveling at my feet. Naruto said before yanking on the chain, bringing the weight back. My demands are non-negotiable. Period, end of story, case closed, goodbye. Naruto said simply. Bakashi spoke up. Naruto, let us hear your demands first before you ask us to just agree to them. He said somewhat diplomatically. I remember Ichiha Hinata telling me that she told you the offer we made for your release. Naruto locked his gaze with his sensei for a moment and his eyes faded back to Cerulean. I suppose it is fair that you hear all of my demands first. He said and leaned back in the chair a bit. First, I am to be paid every 30 days after this date S-class long-term mission pay. Non-negotiable. He could see a few of the shinobi nodding their head. It was understandable because it was considered a long-term S-class mission. When I have killed an objective, with confirmation of the head in the morgue where Haruno Sakura the head of the medical facility can confirm the identity, I will receive a bonus of A-ranked mission pay, as well as the bounty on the head I brought in. There were a few grumbles, especially from the greedy merchants, but they didn't disagree. Kakashi even wrote it down, obviously taking notes so he could remember everything for later. Naruto, is there a way we can convince you to go for a B-ranked mission bonus instead? Kakashi asked. Hein, under one condition. 
Ichiha Sasuke will be considered an S-ranked missing nin, and as such his bounty will reflect this. Naruto said simply. Two B-ranks counted as an A-rank. Four A-ranks counted as an S-rank. It was simple numbers for Naruto. Bakashi noticed the numbers as well and knew Naruto was getting more out of it. But it would be easier to pay him a B-rank and an S-rank in one lump sum than it would be to pay him an A-rank and an S-rank. Condition number two. The village will pay for all of my supplies, including the bill on Hokage-sama's desk from Higurashi's forge for one Kusurigama. Naruto said simply. Food supplies while inside the village, as well as bills are excluded. But ninja supplies and traveling supplies are to be included. Bakashi looked at the bill, having wondered why it came to his desk two days ago. It was impressively steep. You're not going to let this one be negotiated are you? Kakashi asked. Naruto thought for a moment. I can pay the bill myself if Hokage-sama can still beat me in a spar. Bakashi winced. He was not looking forward to fighting Naruto, especially with that Kusurigama, but he would have to if he expected his village to have any sort of treasury left. Okay, I'll do it, later though. Give me a bit of time to train up a bit. Remember Kakashi-sensei, reenacting scenes from my books with Anko isn't considered training. Naruto couldn't help but slide that jab in on Kakashi, but seeing his old sensei blush was completely worth it. Are there any more demands Naruto-kun? Naruto's gaze was drawn to Uchiha Itachi who sat there in perfect pose, almost still as a statue. On one hand, Naruto never really had a problem with Itachi. On the other, Itachi had married Hinata, a fact that really dug its spurs into Naruto. But as Naruto thought of the pleading tone in Hinata's voice, Naruto couldn't ignore the fact that Itachi had helped the woman. Of course. I have a few more. Naruto said simply. I am to be considered a hired mercenary. I am not going to be reinstated as a shinobi, I am not going to take orders from anyone in this room, with the exception of Hokage-sama. I will gladly take into consideration advice, but I will not be controlled. I am free to do as I please now. All of my crimes, up until the point that I eliminate Zetsu, Ichiha Sasuke, Ichiha Madara and Ichiha Abido are to be pardoned, no ifs ands or buts. Naruto said. He had kept part of the original deal and reworded it so there were no loopholes. When all is said and done, I am going back to my 8x10 cell where I will live out the rest of my life in relative peace and quiet. Naruto said. Those were the major points he wanted and it seemed like the councils were seeing that they were relatively cheap demands. And lastly, all terms, but my payment, are renegotiable by my whim, up to and including the date of confirmation of the elimination of the forementioned shinobi. Naruto said. No kinjutsu from the forbidden scroll or clan status Naruto. Kakashi inquired a little curiously. Naruto snorted. I have the kinjutsu I need from the Forbidden Scroll, I've had it for 18 years sensei. As for clan status, why bother? As of right now, I'm expecting to go back to prison a free man. Now, are there any requests to add to my list? I say you are to have a child so that when you are old enough the Kaiubi no Yoko may be sealed within it. One of the merchants on the civilian side said. Naruto spared him a brief glance. Denied. Naruto said flatly. Why you the merchant was cut off by the weight of the Kusurigama shooting past his face and ripping a chunk off the merchant's ear. Denied. You people came to me. Naruto said looking at the civilian council fully now before looking at the shinobi side and then to Kakashi. Most of these are Kanoha's problems, not mine. I solved my problems 18 years ago. The only reason I'm doing this is to get my hands on Ichiha Abido. You dumbasses should have just killed Ichiha Sasuke 16 years ago instead of attempting another retrieval mission. You should have watched the remains of Ichiha Madara, given that several Anbu members watched the Sandame Hokage fight Arachimaru 18 years ago and watched as Arachimaru performed the Ido Tensei of the past Hokage. No one thought he wouldn't get Ichiha Madara, the only man to have fought on par with the Shadai Hokage. Naruto shook his head. These are Kanoha's problems, Kanoha fucked up and ended up having 4S rank Nin wanting to destroy it. Four that went to ground five years ago after the simultaneous destruction of Iwa and Kiri, and now it's up to me to track them down and kill each of them. Naruto pulled on the chain, drawing it back once more. I could say kiss my ass and go back to my cell. I will not force my burden on an innocent child and then let this village abuse it to try and make it a weapon. Naruto said simply and stood up. I will be Kurama's last container. After that, he will be free to roam the elemental nations because only an Uzumaki can contain his power. Naruto turned and walked out of the council chamber. He wasn't so childish to slam the door behind him, but he had made his point, plain and simple. Naruto-kun, wait. He heard after a time and turned to see Itachi moving to catch up. Itachi? Naruto said simply. He turned and walked aside the Ichiha for a time. Isum and I both left the Akatsuki after your little event 18 years ago. Itachi said simply. We came back to Konoha, so he is around. Abito had been most unpleasant because you literally fell off the grid when you went to prison. 
you were kept off every official channel that Tsunade Sama could think of, and even a few unofficial ones with the help of Jureya Sama. Naruto nodded simply, understanding that. Seemed he owed Tsunade and Jureya a drink when he got to the afterlife. I doubt this is the only thing you want to talk about, so spill it. Naruto said. Itachi nodded. Two things. One, I wish to fight you after you are done with Hokage-sama. Itachi said simply. Naruto thought about it, fighting Itachi might be fun actually. Why don't you fight alongside Kakashi-sensei? It might help him win with some of the things I have planned for this. Naruto said, patting the Kusurigama. Itachi nodded, understanding. It wasn't confidence on the blonde's part, simple fact that the blonde was going to turn his weapon into something dangerous. The second, Hanada-san misses you. Naruto barely kept the growl from coming out of his throat. He turned to move away, but Itachi grabbed his arm. Please, Naruto-kun. Hanada-san has always loved you, simple as that, and I have come to find her to be a good friend over the years. I wish for her to be happy, and that happiness can only be found with you. Talk with her, dance with her, eat with her, go see a movie, I don't care what you do with her. But she is happiest remembering fond moments of things you have done, and more often than not, I have heard her crying herself to sleep over a stuffed orange fox. It didn't take a genius to figure out what Itachi was implying. I can't do anything like that with her. Naruto said simply. She's married to you nonetheless. We could get a divorce, and you could have her to yourself then. Itachi said, as though it solved everything. Naruto shrugged off Itachi's hand. I'm not the same man anymore Itachi. Naruto said and shook his head a bit. Naruto then began to walk off, his head down and his hair in his face a bit. Itachi could only watch the blonde walk off and shook his head. Naruto really had changed. Chapter 2. Zetsu. Naruto looked over at Sasuke, the grotesque form of his cursed seal level 2, was a sight to behold. The black Jidori looked dangerous. Was this the sort of thing Sasuke would go to just to get revenge on someone that was already so far gone? Naruto looked to his hand, the Kaiubi cloak had surrounded his entire body. A swirling vortex of crimson chakra appeared in his hand, a Rasengan formed from the Kaiubi's chakra. Naruto looked across to Sasuke, his best friend and his brother. The Valley of the End, fitting really for the two to have a decisive clash, Naruto couldn't think of a better place than where the Shadai Hokage and Ichihamadara had their own final clash. Takra surged to his legs, and he bent down, nearly the same time as Sasuke leapt through the air. His Rasengan was stronger, he knew it. Watching Sasuke leap through the air, arsing slightly with electricity shooting off his hands, Naruto knew that this would be it. This would be the end to all end all. Kill. The booming voice shouted in his head, and the Rasengan faltered as Naruto clutched his head. He couldn't shake it off, and he ended up pumping more chakra into the Rasengan, making it spin faster and stronger. Naruto leapt through the air, propelling himself at Sasuke's form. His Rasengan was stronger, it had to be or else he would fail. Their jutsu collided, electricity arsed away from both of them, catching against the water of the waterfall. Naruto felt his Rasengan winning, pushing back the Chidori. Kill him. Kill the Ichiha. Kill him before he takes more from you. Naruto's Rasengan faltered again, shrinking and destabilizing. Sasuke's Shidori passed over Naruto's hand, slicing through his arm. Naruto gritted his teeth and charged his Rasengan up, their jutsu both hit home, Naruto taking another blow through his shoulder as he drove the Rasengan into Sasuke's rib, feeling them crack before launching him away into the legs of Madara's statue. Naruto landed on the ground, blood pooling from the slowly sealing wound of his shoulder. Naruto's vision swam, but he dragged himself up to his knees. He coughed up some blood and knew he had some in both lungs now. He pushed himself to his feet, feeling like he was about ready to collapse. He dragged his feet, feeling himself bleeding from his shoulder, but not nearly as badly. Kaiubi's chakra was slowly cutting off. Naruto stood over Sasuke's body, watching as his body reverted to normal. Blood spilled out of the sides of Naruto's mouth, and his orange jumpsuit was staining red with his blood. Naruto bent down and hefted the Ichiha onto his shoulder, collapsing onto his knees when Sasuke's weight hit him. Naruto struggled to his feet, gritting his teeth and coughing a bit more as he began to struggle with walking. He had Sasuke over his shoulder in a classic fireman carry. Naruto made it to the statue of the Shadai Hokage before he fell to one knee, crying out in pain. His nerves were shot to hell, and every step felt like he was rolling around in hot coals. Naruto stood up, gritting his teeth. Those that abandoned the mission he said as he kept walking, despite the absolute pain he was in. Our trash. He finished making it down the trailing, leading towards where he had fought Kimimuro for a time. But those that abandoned their comrades Naruto hit a loose rock and he fell down again, Sasuke spilling away as well. Naruto's vision swam and he grabbed a fistful of dirt, crawling his way to Sasuke. Those that abandoned their comrades. The figure landed in front of Sasuke. Are less than trash. Naruto looked up to see who had finished and couldn't have been happier to see Kakashi. 
Sensei Naruto whispered as he tried to pull himself to his feet. Bakashi popped a soldier pill and then summoned a shadow clone. I'll take it from here Naruto, rest. He told his student and watched the blonde nod a bit. Naruto collapsed face first into the dirt, unconscious his body unable to take any more. Bakashi bent down and picked the blonde up while his clone took care of Sasuke. Naruto Kakashi whispered, looking at Naruto's ragged appearance. The tears in the shoulders of the jumpsuit told Kakashi exactly what Naruto had been through, there was so much blood that he lost. Bakashi turned and looked back towards Konoha before both him and his copy took off running for all that he was worth. Despite his lack of really teaching the blonde, something he was ashamed to admit really, the blonde had proven to be his best student. Naruto had taken Kakashi's words to heart the day of the bell test, and despite being extraordinarily rough around the edges, Naruto had proven to be a shining diamond I'm sorry Naruto. He whispered a bit, feeling a few tears sliding from his eyes as he realized he had failed him. Kakashi looked up ahead, sprinting as fast as he could. Pakin, go ahead and inform Tsunade Sama of what's happened and that both boys are in bad shape. Kakashi didn't know a damn thing about medical diagnosis, he could only really assume on how much blood was covering both the blonde and Sasuke. Of course, Sasuke was covered in Naruto's blood, no doubt about that, but he could also tell that a few of Sasuke's ribs were broken. Understand Kakashi. The brown pug said before adding a burst of speed and moving faster than Kakashi. Kakashi would have attempted to keep up, but there was a problem with that. He was running as fast as safely could without jostling the two boys too much. If they bounced around, especially Naruto, then they could get in even worse condition. Some medics showed up and immediately rebounded of a tree branch before keeping pace with Kakashi and his clone. They instantly began to address the situation and the extent of their injuries even while running. Sasuke-san's injuries are mostly superficial. The worst of it is chakra exhaustion, two broken ribs, three cracked ribs, and a mild concussion. The medic then began to heal Sasuke, doing what he could for the ribs and the concussion. You're cleared, Sasuke and can be transported faster now. I managed to reduce the effects of the concussion and repaired some of the damage done to his ribs. At these words, the clone of Kakashi put a bit of extra speed on, slowly disappearing. Naruto san's injuries are much more severe. The other medic said. His left lung collapsed and began to fill with blood, he has damage along his neck and spine, slight swelling of the brain, both lungs have been punctured with the right one being able to still offer him air, chakra poisoning from using its chakra, and a severe case of chakra exhaustion. The word slammed hard into Kakashi's chest as the two medics began to work as best as they could on Naruto, even on the run. Naruto had done everything in his power to stop Sasuke in a manner that the raven-haired boy wouldn't be killed. Sasuke had done everything in his power to try and kill Naruto, even using Kakashi's own original technique on the blonde twice. Damn. One of the medics shouted, drawing Kakashi's attention. There's residual lightning chakra sparking in Naruto-sen's body, it's causing his heart to flutter. We're losing him. The other medic, the older of the two, pulled out a needle and used his mouth to pull off the cap. He slammed it into Naruto's heart, pumping it with a drug. It's adrenaline. I'm medically ordering you to get the patient at Tsunade Sama, he needs proper medical attention that we can't give him out here. The medic then pulled out a vial of pills and pulled off the top. He popped three into his hand and then helped Kakashi eat them. Kakashi felt the first of his celestial gates force open and chakra circulated through his system. He put on an extra burst of speed, holding Naruto as tight to his chest as possible, making sure to cradle the blonde's head so he didn't cause any more damage. He cleanly outstripped his clone and even ran past Pakin. Stay with me Naruto. I don't want to look upon another name. Bakashi said softly as he kept going. Bakashi flared his chakra as he approached the gates, get Hokage-sama to the hospital. He shouted to Katetsu who was on duty at the moment. Bakashi bolted past, making his way to the hospital as quickly as his body could take him. He barreled through the doors, using his shoulder to push it open. Emergency patient here. Two punctured lungs, adrenaline circulating through his body, swelling of the brain Kakashi said the things as quickly as he was sure the medical staff would understand. One of the medics had to inject his heart with adrenaline, he's got spinal damage, Kakashi backed off as they took Naruto into one of the emergency wards immediately. Within moments of Kakashi arriving, Tsunade left from another room. Kakashi. I thought you were out going after Naruto and Sasuke. She said before taking in the amount of blood on Kakashi's clothes. Just then, Kakashi's clone charged in with Sasuke. Naruto's been taken into an emergency ward, it's its bad Tsunade Sama. Kakashi said and looked down. Part of it is my fault, I'm to blame quite a bit for it. Tsunade gave Kakashi a harsh glare. If that's true, then I will be having an unpleasant talk with you soon. She said before going to where Naruto was to help with the procedure. Two days later, Naruto woke up and sat up, giving a low groan of displeasure at seeing the white walls. 
A hospital he muttered as he sat up and scooted back against his bed a bit. Soon Aid would be most displeased if he left, so he wasn't going to try. He did however remove the IV in his arm and wrap his arm up properly. He wasn't going to have his mobility restricted. Naruto got up out of the bed and headed into the bathroom to get some water. It felt like his entire body had been used as Tsunade's punching bag. Naruto could barely remember anything after that final clash with Sasuke, and even then he didn't remember the outcome of it. Naruto summoned a shadow clone and sent it out, letting it head to the Hokage's office. Naruto was sure his control was shot to something awful from drawing on Kyuubi's chakra so much, but it had to have been done. He needed to know who was okay, how bad the injuries were, and did he successfully get Sasuke back. The clone rushed across the rooftops as best as possible, using a slight transformation to look like he was in his orange jumpsuit. He leapt onto a ledge on the Hokage Tower and was about to go in through the open window when he spotted Tsunade's door open. On a whim, the clone wasn't sure why, it transformed into a native bird of the Land of Fire. A commonly native bird and perched on the windowsill. No shinobi had ever seen past Naruto's transformations when he had tried and becoming a bird was something he was trying to do. No shinobi would question its presence either, after all the chances of a common bird landing on a windowsill were incredibly high if no one forced it away. Then walked the unofficial head of the civilian council, his name escaped Naruto, but the man owned a fair amount of the shops in Konoha that were civilian-based. He was also one of the most outspoken individuals that wanted Naruto's head on a pike. Tsunade Sama, a pleasure to see you this morning. The man said and walked forward, sitting down and watching the older blonde woman who was working on paperwork. Tsunade really didn't want to deal with this bastard. His words may have been honeyed, but she wasn't going to be fooled by the pleasantries. Den, what can I do for you? She asked. She had busted her ass dealing with the near-dying condition of several genin. She didn't want to deal with this man less than three days later. Then pulled out a slip of paper. On that paper, you will find all twelve names and signatures of the civilian council. It is a petition to have one Yuzumaki Naruto removed from the shinobi forces. Under Kanoha's founding articles, written by your grandfather and granduncle, the Shadai and Nidame Hokages respectively, if we, the civilian council, believe a shinobi to be a threat to the safety of not just the shinobi, but also of that of the civilians of Kanoha, we are able to draw up a list of complaints, and with the signature of the majority of the civilian councils. We can have it brought up during the next council meeting if we inform the current Hokage ahead of time. Tsunade took the list of complaints and read it over. Disrupting the peace, Naruto's pranks no doubt, given their loud noises, and then the loud chases through the village, disrespecting those in higher ranks, Tsunade thought of all the times Naruto called her Bachan, and it was no secret Naruto called Siratobi Jai-san. Plus there was all the times he had pranked Aruka, defacing public and private property, Tsunade had already read most of the reports on Naruto's pranks, and they were quite extensive, though nothing a few hours of manual labor from the boy couldn't fix, defacing a village monument, Tsunade had originally snorted when she had seen the report on the boy's prank on the Hokage monument. Theft of a village artifact, Tsunade's blood boiled at that, she knew Saratobi had already cleared that one, the boy had been tricked into stealing it, use of excessive force during a retrieval mission of a high priority target, someone must have leaked the fact Naruto used the Kaiubi's chakra during the mission, and that Sasuke's ribs were broken. A medic of her caliber could fix a few broken ribs no problem, but given that it happened on the mission, there was a risk of the rib puncturing a lung or the heart. Endangering the life of a clan heir? Tsunade asked in regards to the last complaint. Then crossed his hands in front of his face. And of course, in accordance to the founding articles of Kanoha, if this list of complaints isn't brought up at the next council meeting, then the civilian council, or the party that brought the complaints up in the first place, may go to the daimyo in regards to our complaints. This last one is bullshit den. Tsunade said loudly. Ichiha Sasuke had left Kanoha village unauthorized to go to a known enemy of Kanoha. Claiming he was a clan heir is impossible. Then considered her words. True, if he did willingly go to Urachimaru in the first place. The Yamanaka clan has several mind alteration techniques that not even the Sharingan can stop. Who is to say that Urachimaru does not have access to similar techniques? The mission had not been marked as a failure either, and up until that pointer that Ichiha Sasuke is proven to be going to Urachimaru willingly, then Ichiha Sasuke is still clan heir of the Ichiha clan. Yuzumaki Naruto's actions could have ended the Ichiha bloodline in Konoha for good. Tsunade mentally cursed, it was bad. If the civilian council took this list of complaints to the fire daimyo, they could spin the tale however they wanted to. Tsunade knew they would spin it exactly how they wanted it to sound, that Yuzumaki Naruto was a delinquent who was starting to get progressively worse. Tsunade mentally racked her mind for every possible loophole she could think to use. There wasn't any coming to mind, but she needed time, time to look at the laws. What do you plan to do once Yuzumaki Naruto is removed from the shinobi forces? 
he will be tried for his crimes and accordingly punished. If he is found guilty, he will have his chakra sealed completely, the Kaiubi no Yoko will be cut off from him, and he will be spending a significant amount of time in the prison for Kanoha civilians. Of course, we don't want such a delinquent to cause problems for other prisoners, so he will likely be placed in solitary confinement for the good of the other prisoners. Denb said. Tsunade found a way to get time. Yuzumaki Naruto isn't fully healed yet. Tsunade said simply. You cannot, in good conscience, send Yuzumaki Naruto into a prison without his body being healed properly, something that will take about two weeks. Some of the more rowdy prisoners in the civilian prison might see Yuzumaki Naruto in a weakened state and attempt to do him physical harm. As his doctor, I cannot allow this. Until I have cleared Yuzumaki Naruto from the hospital, he cannot be tried, and you cannot bring up your list of complaints. As Hokage, I must also remind you not to push me on this because of the Kaiubi no Yoko sealed within Yuzumaki Naruto. If Yuzumaki Naruto dies, there is a strong possibility of the seal breaking, releasing the Kaiubi no Yoko once more. I don't need to remind you the damages done 12 years ago. I'm not aware of any child being born within the next three months. Ben paused, realizing that Tsunade had played the medic in the neutral Hokage well. Even if he took the complaints to the fire daimyo, Tsunade only needed to remind the man of the events that took place over a decade ago. Coupled with the fact that even if Den won those proceedings, they would still have to deal with the possibility of some of the more rowdy prisoners actually attacking Naruto. When and if the Kaiubi attacked once more, they did not have a newborn child to seal the fox into. The damages would be catastrophic. Very well Tsunade-sama, we will wait to bring these complaints up until the week of Yuzumaki Naruto's discharge from the hospital. The Naruto clone took off from the windowsill and in midair, puffed out of existence. Naruto sat up straighter in his bed, his mind reeling as he got the information from his clone. No he whispered, putting his face in his hands, and silently he began to cry, wondering what he could do to sway the mind of those out for his head. You could kill them. Naruto snapped awake and clutched at his face, giving a low groan. That damn dream, no, the memory, it always played in his mind. He got up out of his bed and went to the bathroom, doing his business and washing up for the day. He glanced at the mirror, Kurama's face wasn't looking at him. Kami, I just want it all to end. Naruto said and rested his head against the mirror. He wanted to be normal, even after all this time. But normal waved him by the very hour of his birth. Naruto went into his room and grabbed his current weapon of choice and sat at his father's desk. He set the bladed edge of the kusurigama on the desk and grabbed a set of metal picks from his father's workstation. The tricks to setting a seal into a weapon was to either do it while it was hot or do it carefully with little picks so the weapon wasn't damaged or compromised. Naruto began to etch a seal into the blade, working carefully and occasionally blowing the metal shavings off. It was hard to do, but Naruto was slowly able to draw the symbols into the metal. He picked it up and channeled his chakra into the blade and looked as a blade of wind surrounded the blade of his weapon. He gave a smirk, knowing his weapon got that much more lethal. He cut his chakra off from the weapon. The chain was about six feet long, but he had an idea. He began to etch seals into the chain links, using a magnifying glass to help with the intricate seals. He was doing it near the center of the chain, where he would hold it if he wanted to swing the sickle around, instead of throwing the weight. When he was done, he channeled his chakra into the chain, going through the seals, and it extended chakra chains forcing the links apart and making the six feet chain go to about eight feet. He then retracted his chakra, and the chakra chain snapped back into place, the links of the chain undamaged because of the seals. Naruto had one more seal to put in. He began to work at the weighted end of the chain, etching in a seal slowly. It would make his weapon as deadly as Kakashi's Rikiri, if not even more so. None of his enemies would be expecting it when he brought the weapon into the game. Naruto smirked as he saw the final seal in place. The next day, Hinata entered the restaurant that her former teammates all had agreed to meet at. She saw Shino and Kiba and moved over, sitting down on one side of the round table. Kiba-kun, Shino-kun. She said softly, inclining her head a bit. Hinata. Shino said inclining his own head. Kiba was telling me how Naruto-san has donated a substantial amount of funds to Akamaru's fundraiser. Hinata looked surprised. How substantial are we talking about? Hinata asked, glancing to Kiba. Twice the amount I needed. Kiba said and saw Hinata's eyes widen. I don't get it Hinata. Kiba said simply. Here we have a guy that's one of the most violent criminals from Kanoha. Kiba said ignoring the slight glare Hinata was giving him. Kanoha owes him everything, and yet the people spat on him and his father's dying wish. Yet he creates seals to improve the security of Kanoha, creates seals to improve the vests Archunin and Jonin wear, creates seals to help improve just about everything, spends vast amounts of money on bonds for the village. And just a few days ago, he gave me enough money to start a program to get vets trained in the village. Can someone explain this to me? 
Hinata took a deep breath and ordered some tea. She waited for it before she drank some of it and closed her eyes. Naruto-kun is insane Kiba-kun. She said to the obvious surprise to both of her teammates. Shino even removed the sunglasses he wore to look her in the eyes. No one knows exactly what happened the days leading up to the event Kiba-kun, no one but Naruto-kun. Tsunade Sama said that for a time she thought Kurama was influencing Naruto-kun. Then, he enters prison and has to watch his back 24-7. The Iwajonin he killed was the first and got Naruto-kun two weeks in solitary confinement. Solitary is no light, no fresh air, no contact with anyone. Just a small 6 by 3 inch metal slot in the door to push a plate of food in, rats and bugs crawling around the cell. Hinata said watching as her two comrades began to understand the severity of the situation. Now, every time someone kills another inmate, that inmate is put into solitary confinement for two weeks. Naruto-kun's current count is over two dozen confirmed kills during his time in prison. He spent close to a full year in solitary by force. Then he starts to go involuntarily during his day when he has chakra. She said. Each time, he's alone with the exception of Kurama. Kurama has been known to be a force of malevolent chakra and intent. Each and every time, for two weeks, Naruto-kun only had Kurama to talk to or memories to escape to. Naruto-kun's memories are not good places to be. Even Inoichi-sama hates delving into Naruto-kun's memories. Hinata said. Hinata took a deep breath and drank some of her tea once more. Before Kiba could open his mouth to speak, she beat him to it. Then there are all the seals on Naruto-kun's body. Over half of them are etched into his skin, not drawn but actually cut. Naruto-kun wants nothing to do with other prisoners and he wouldn't use his shadow clones because they would draw attention to the fact he had access to his chakra. This means he etched them into his own body using a sharp implement and a clone couldn't do it for him. Can you imagine the pain he must have endured etching the seals into the parts of his back that he could reach? The two boys were quiet, unable to imagine anything like what Naruto had done. Naruto had driven himself insane and yet he was functional. Not Kiba, not Hinata, and not Shino had known that Naruto had heard Hinata's words. He was passing over the building when his advanced hearing, gifted by Kurama, picked up Hinata's beginning sentence. Naruto gave a smirk. So they knew. They knew he was insane, no doubt his psych profiles helping Hinata, since she had obviously been preparing to get him out for some time. Still, they didn't know the extent to which he was insane. Naruto sneered as he looked down at the civilians below. How he hated them. Fill them then, take my terrifying form and blast all of them away. Naruto ignored Kurama before turning and continuing on his way. Kakashi had sent word that he was ready and who was he to argue with his sensei. Naruto paused on a rooftop when a puff of smoke appeared behind him and a black and red toad the size Gamakichi had been originally appeared. Gamadaro, what's up little buddy? Naruto asked, picking the toad up. We found him a Nikki, heading towards AIM. He's going slowly, but he's making progress. Ma and Pa are having those trained best in the sage arts to follow him. The natural energy makes it so we're not detected. Gamadaro said. Naruto nodded before summoning a clone. It gave a nod and ran off, heading to gather supplies. It was time for their first hunt, but first Naruto had a spar with Kakashi and Itachi. Naruto unsealed a bag of chips and handed them to Gamadaro before running off towards training ground 7. He dropped from the trees, landing in a crouch. He glanced around, noticing Kakashi, Itachi, and surprisingly kiss him all there. Sushi. Naruto said to kiss him, getting the bigger man to give a slight twitch in irritation. Kakashi held his hand out. Relax kiss him. Kakashi said. Are you ready for this Naruto? Kakashi asked. Naruto stood up and removed his kusurigama from the small of his back. Yeah, I'm ready sensei. Naruto began to spin up the kusurigama, the sickle swinging around and creating a disc of sharp wind chakra. Naruto then swung the chain forward, whipping the disc out and at the three who leapt away. Kakashi came from behind, his Sharingan revealed as he engaged Naruto into Jutsu. Naruto used his Kusarigama twisting it in such a way that Kakashi had to draw back his hand or foot or risk getting it captured. Bissam came in with a wide swing of Samahata, and Naruto turned, flicking his wrist and wrapping the chakra-absorbing sword up with the chain. Naruto then yanked tight, forcing Kisum to pull back on Samahata. Naruto channeled chakra to the weight of the chain that he still held and threw it at Kisum. It streaked at him, the smell of ozone burning in the air as the lightning seal activated at his chakra. It increased the speed and penetration rate of the weight, forcing Kisum to jump back and relinquish Samahata. Naruto leapt away, unraveling the semi-sentient sword as he did so. Itachi worked with a short sword and Naruto was stepping back, dodging and weaving around the weapon as he watched Itachi's feet and chest. Naruto spun and channeled the chakra to the sickle and swiped at the short sword. He cut through it rather easily, but Itachi leapt back before Naruto could continue with his attack. Itachi's hands flew through hand seals and without words he blew out a fireball the size of Naruto. 
Naruto spun and slung out his hand, throwing the weight of the Kusurigama with his left hand at Kakashi, piercing through the water dragon he was trying to use, while Naruto was somewhat distracted. The lightning-enhanced weight ripped through the water dragon like it was nothing and forced Kakashi to dodge. With his free hand free for a moment, Naruto stuck it up and the fireball slammed into his hand, only to be absorbed by the sea etched into his palm. Naruto drew his hand back to his hip before thrusting it out at Itachi once more, the fireball being released only its direction was reversed, blasting at Itachi. Naruto spun around, swinging with his right hand over his head, forcing the Kusarigama to lengthen to considerable lengths as the sickle whipped through the air and forced Kisum and Kakashi back once more. Naruto retracted the weight to his hand and leapt back a bit, standing there. Naruto threw the weight once more at Kakashi before he heard something. A ripple appeared in the air and a vortex was right there in front of the weight, but Naruto yanked back hard on it, pulling it out of the extra-dimensional anomaly. Naruto then threw out an exploding tag, it exploded, but instead of smoke or a concussive blast, it exploded out with a thick mist. Kakashi let out a cry of pain and wetness splattered on the ground. Naruto's spinning Kusarigama blew away the mist, showing Kakashi kneeling on the ground, his back cut open by a thin blade. I win. Naruto said simply. That's the sweet spot. Fourth lumbar down, just to the left of the spine, abdominal aorta. I nicked it when I could have cut right through it. You better get Kakashi Sensei to the hospital. Naruto said. Naruto turned and set the Kusurigama at the small of his back, sticking it there with his chakra. He then began to walk off while Itachi and Kisum handled Kakashi. I'm heading out Kakashi Sensei, Naruto said and looked over his shoulder. I'm headed after Zetsu. My spies have already spotted him, so I'm getting moving. Kakashi was hung between Kisum and Itachi. Good luck Naruto. Kakashi told his student. And good job. Naruto nodded before running off to go after Zetsu. Naruto sprinted out of the gates of Konoha and through the forests, his toads were already setting up the trap and it would take him a while to get there to deal with Zetsu. For his first hunt, Naruto took to scavenging the land for food and water. He even managed to find a rare water plant that when treated right, would be an extremely lethal poison. He didn't treat his weapon with the poison. A choice, aim for the eyes of the snake first. Blind it before you blindside it. Kurama told Naruto as they were resting one night. Naruto smirked a bit and began to hum his tune while he skinned a rabbit. Oh how he was going to enjoy this mission, enjoy it so much more than he probably should. Naruto continued on the next day, Kurama having spoken with Naruto through the night, telling the blonde how things felt with Hashirama, so Naruto would know if the target was going to use anything interesting. Naruto had a feeling Zetsu was more of a tojutsu based fighter anyways. Naruto was visited by Gamadaro once more, explaining that the trap was all set, giving Naruto a bit of a smirk to his face as he then began to push himself. Though, hearing about how Kumo had attacked had given a small bit of displeasure to Naruto, it did slow Zetsu down. He was a cannibal, and every battle meant a meal. Zetsu would stay there until the bodies were all eaten, so it gave Naruto a few days if Zetsu preserved them properly. When Naruto arrived at the battlefield, he watched Zetsu for a while as the man feasted on a dead Kumo shinobi. The man was even sophisticated about it, using a steak knife and fork and drinking the blood from a wine glass. Naruto smirked a bit as he leapt into the clearing and landed. Around them, spanning a good 300 yards of a diameter, was a golden dome-like barrier made by a dozen toads. Hello Zetsu, I'm afraid dinner is cancelled tonight. Zetsu stood up and wiped his mouth. I suppose it is, fucking brat. Zetsu looked around, noticing the several armored toads around the barrier. Using the toads, most impressive gah, toads taste like shit but I suppose we'll eat them anyways. Quite their interference will no doubt prove troublesome, and so it will only be fair to eat them. Naruto was mildly surprised to hear both the white and black part talk. The black part had quite the mouth on him too. Talking about eating his partners though pissed Naruto off. He leaned his head down, giving himself a bit more glare as a few strands of his blonde hair fell in his eyes. Zetsu removed the Akatsuki cloak he still wore and tossed it to the side. It figured that a clone, an incomplete clone at that, would be genderless and naked underneath, but Naruto wasn't going to give the abomination any mercy. He grabbed the Kusurigama off his back and began to spin it around, just fast enough that he didn't have to put a lot of effort into keeping it spinning, but also slow enough that Zetsu could still track the blade of it. Before we begin, tell us something where the fuck has your ass been hiding? Zetsu asked, beginning to walk around Naruto, circling like a shark before a feeding frenzy. Naruto grinned a bit. I've been in prison. Amazing what some time behind bars can do, isn't it? Naruto asked as he too began to circle, slowly increasing the pace at which his Kusarigama was spinning. Ha! Ah, you were a prison bitch. Did you drop the soap any? The black half of Zetsu asked. Naruto ignored the comment. He had his own personal shower, so he never had to worry about that. 
He slung out his hand, the weight shooting forward and ripping into Zetsu's chest before the nin could dodge. Naruto had sent lightning chakra down to the seal, further increasing the speed it traveled at. Zetsu split off, right down the middle from the tier, and both the black and white sides formed a second half that was somewhat twisted. Still, they were dangerous, and now they were both beginning to circle around Naruto. Naruto began to spin his Kusurigama faster, before swinging at the chain extending and unleashing a curved blade of wind. He began to move, the two halves of Zetsu dodging the attack and moving to attack him. Naruto spun and ducked, weaved around their strikes, using his Kusurigama to get an attack in when he could. They were dangerous without a doubt, and Naruto was aware of the spores in the air, slowly sapping away at his chakra. Naruto launched out through three ceiling tags that exploded, launching out Senban at the two Zetsu. They both dodged or even brought their arms up to block the projectiles. The white Zetsu sank into the ground while the black one charged in, taking Senban between each finger and swiping at Naruto like they were claws. Naruto leapt into the air just as his throat was about to be slashed open and he threw out two more tags. One exploded in water, forcing the black half away from the sheer pressure. The other one unleashed a bolt of lightning like it was from a storm cloud. It struck the ground and the white Zetsu was forced to emerge. Naruto looked at the two. They were surprisingly weak. He hoped the other three would be far stronger than these two. Naruto began to swing the Kusurigama around more, spinning it faster and faster. He lashed out with a weight and it shot at the black Zetsu who sank into the ground. It rebounded off the barrier twice before burrowing into the ground at an angle. Naruto ran along the chain as it appeared out of the ground. His lightning chakra was still surging into the weight, making sure that the weight never lost momentum, and since the barrier was actually a giant sphere, Naruto was making a maze of chains. Naruto detached the sickle of the Kusurigama and threw the other half of the chain, channeling his chakra into it through his feet. Over two dozen lines of chains were formed throughout the barrier, and Naruto flipped, jumped, and ran along them. Both ends of the chains were pulled on by the toads outside the barrier, once he told them to, keeping the chain taunt as they dug into the ground with their feet. Naruto raced up to the top of the barrier as quickly as he could and leapt, throwing a tag out. Lightning-enhanced kunai shot out, digging into the ground deeply. The seals engraved in the handles exploded with extreme force, making the two Zetsu go to the chains for safety. Both halves of Zetsu could only stare at the blonde from their spots on the chain. Despite the rather flashy style of the barrier and the maze of chains, the blonde was using more ninja arts than anything. No flash jutsu, no screaming out a technique name, it was like he was rewriting the rules of being a shinobi. Even Madara called out his techniques, but not the blonde in front of them. Zetsu knew, as a shinobi, they were required to be stealthy, they were required to never be seen or heard. Most did a piss-poor job of it, from genin to cage-level shinobi. Zetsu needed to leave, he needed to report to Abito and Madara. He had an advantage, being made from the cells of Hashirama, he could feel when a stealth attack was going to occur when he was on the ground. They didn't have such an advantage, despite having the cells of Hashirama inside them. On these chains though, Zetsu had a disadvantage. Sure, he could drop down and once more enter the ground, but the dirt was loosened by the blonde's kunai. He would no doubt throw more, let them streak into the ground before exploding. The blonde was a dangerous opponent. Naruto threw out three more tags, all three exploded out into a thick mist, and the two Zetsu went back to back. Ring ring. Zetsu spun to where he heard a bell jingle, keeping calm despite his heart rate accelerating. He didn't need to panic. The mist was thick with Naruto's chakra, making it hard to sense where the attack was coming from. Ring ring. The black half leapt down onto a lower chain, punching it with his fist. It buckled a moment before it was pulled taunt, but the black Zetsu missed the target he had heard. Ring, schlick. The black half of the Zetsu could see everything clearly. The Butcher of Kanoha had come for him, and it was obvious. His head was caught before it could drop to the floor and sealed away into a palm. The white Zetsu began to panic a little bit now. The black half had been killed, he could feel it inside of him. Was the ringing of the bell a Jinjutsu? Was it meant to throw him off his game? Ring ring. Zetsu did a spin kick, feeling his foot connect with something before it poofed. A shadow clone. Zetsu dropped down to the chain under him, not wanting to stay in the same spot. Ring, schlick. The white half could only stare in his final moments as Yuzumaki Naruto looked down on him, coated in the blood of both Zetsu halves. His face was a mask of crimson. Zetsu began to fall in half, falling off of the chain as the mist was released, and the chain snapped back to the normal six-foot-long chain. Naruto landed on the ground and caught the chain before attaching it to his sickle once more. He cut the pieces of the white Zetsu's head off and sealed them up with the head of the black Zetsu. Naruto had used a shadow clone to force the white half to jump down while he jumped up, cutting Zetsu in half. The barrier came down and Naruto gave a salute to the toads before they went home. Naruto coiled the Kusurigama up and placed it at his lower back. 
He then stacked all the bodies in a pile and set a tag on the chest of the black Zetsu. He then dropped the bells tied at his waist on the pile as well. As Naruto turned and walked away, the pile went up in flames. Naruto headed back to Konoha and let Sakura inspect the pieces of Zetsu, making sure it was the brain of the Zetsu army. Naruto then collected his payment. Naruto headed to Tenten's shop and browsed around while she dealt with a few customers. Finally when it was his turn, he went over to her. Hey Tenten, I need some help building some armor. Nothing fancy, nothing too big. Naruto told her. They then set about getting his measurements out for his hands, up to his elbows, and his feet, up to the shins. Of course, Naruto wanted to tell her to charge the village, but he decided against it and used his newfound bounty from Zetsu's heads to pay for it, getting it made of the expensive chakra conductive metal. Naruto headed home and washed up before heading out once more, dressed in a pair of orange pants and a black mesh shirt. He headed to a park and sat down, leaning against the bench he was in for a while. He watched the little kids play, watched them have their innocent. Memories of blood and pain flashed behind his eyes, and he put his palm against his eye for a moment, trying to get the thoughts from his head. The ball pumped his foot and he glanced down at it. A little girl came over and looked up at him as she grabbed the ball. Aheyo Foxan. She said cheerfully. Naruto blinked a bit at that particular nickname. Foxan. He guessed it was because of his whisker marks. Why not a cat? He asked curiously. The little girl offered a shrug. Two cents says that a man in orange is more like a fox. Ka san says I shouldn't come near you, but two cents says I should be alright, so long as I don't pester you. The little girl said. And what's your name little one? Naruto asked, sitting up a bit more, wondering who this girl was. Ichiha Mikoto. She said happily. Two cents says that I was named after my Obasan. Obasan says that you're nice too. Okay, so Itachi had a kid. That was understandable for Naruto. But who was the mother? Who was Obasan? Naruto rubbed at his eye again, the little girl was definitely a younger Makoto. Naruto remembered from a picture he had seen when he had gone to pick up Sasuke for a team meeting. Who is Obasan Makoto-chan? Naruto asked politely. Isn't it polite to give your name after mine? Makoto asked, tilting her head a bit. Naruto mentally groaned. He didn't want her spilling it to her mother. So long as you keep it a secret from your Ka-san and possibly your Obasan. Naruto said. Makoto gave a big nod that sort of nod only little innocent children could really do. Promise. She said loudly. Namak is Yuzumaki Naruto. He told her after a while. Who is Obasan Makoto-chan? Naruto asked again. You were on Sasu Koji-san's team. She said making Naruto groan a bit. Did the child have ad? Makoto-chan, Naruto began somewhat patiently. It is considered rude to not answer a question. Who is your Obasan Makoto-chan? Obasan is Hinata-chan. Makoto said and turned around. Excuse me Naruto-san. She said and then threw the ball with surprising force at a boy that looked like he had a duck's ass attached to his head for hair. Naruto snorted when he saw the boy get beamed in the back of the head. Shisui Itado, come over here. And bring my ball. Naruto let out a deep chuckle, unable to help it. This was going to be good, he had a feeling about it that he just couldn't shake. Bakoto Nisan, what did I do this time? Shisui asked as he grabbed the ball and walked over, rubbing the back of his head a bit. I met Sasuke Oji-san's teammate, you know the bad Oji-san we have. Mikoto said a little excitedly. But we already met Sakura Oba-san Mikoto Nisan. Shisui said, not really paying attention that much. Why did you have to throw the ball at me? Because it's not Sakura Obasan, it's Naruto-san. Naruto was surprised to see Shisui's head raise up, looking at Naruto with a set of red Sharingan eyes with one tomo each. You're Naruto-san. Shisui said, stepping in front of Makoto to block Naruto's sight from her. Ka-san says you're a bad man, that we're not to talk to you. He said. Shisui, he's not a bad guy. Remember what Tusan and Hinata Obasan says. Makoto said. Learn a person before you judge him. But Ka-san says that we're not to talk to him, that he's dangerous. Shisui stayed in front of Makoto, almost protecting her. Naruto chuckled a bit and shook his head. He liked Makoto already, Shisui needed to get the stick out of his ass. Both sets of words are wise. Naruto said. I am a dangerous man, I am a bad man. Naruto said and leaned into Shisui a bit. But only to those that deserve it. Do you or Makoto-chan deserve it Shisui-chan? Naruto heard Makoto snort. Shisui swallowed, Naruto was close to him, and his focus was on those blonde eyes. He didn't know any Jinjutsu yet so he couldn't use that. And no, Makoto Ni-chan and I are good. He said a bit nervously. Naruto sat back. Good. He said and smiled a bit. Their innocence was refreshing and quite pleasing. How old are you two? He asked. They both answered at the same time. Nine. Naruto palmed his face. Twins great. He said and shook his head before looking to Makoto. 
Makoto-chan, do you have the Sharingan as well? Makoto bobbed her head and it activated. Naruto was mildly surprised to see she had a two Tomo in her left eye and one in her right. He then noticed Shisui looking away, clearly upset. Hey, what's wrong Shisui? Are you jealous of your Nichan? Naruto asked. No. Shisui denied it strongly, which may as well have been yes. Don't worry Shisui-chan, I'm sure you'll catch up. Naruto told him, putting his hand on Shisui's shoulder. All you need is determination and the work ethic. Don't be afraid to ask your Tusan and Nichan as well. Shisui nodded his head, thinking about Naruto's words a bit. Naruto then glanced at Makoto. And don't tease your Itado about not having a second Tamo, yet Makoto-chan, I'm sure both of you will have a fully matured Sharingan in due time. Will we be able to beat Hinata Obasan in a spar then? Makoto asked. Of course. Shisui said loudly. We'll have the Sharingan, she can't match that. He said. Naruto frowned. That wasn't going to fly. He flicked Shisui in the head rather hard, making the boy stumble over. Listen up both of you. He said in a flat tone with just a minor amount of killing intent to get their attention. He was pleased their Sharingan stayed active so they would remember his words. Your eyes mean nothing in a true shinobi fight. Naruto said flatly. Does your Tusan constantly have his Sharingan eyes activated? No, he does not. He does not use his eyes to copy the techniques of his comrades without their permission. Train your bodies. Speed, strength, stealth, reflexes. Then train your mind. Jutsu library, tactics, facts, things like that. I have heard of both of the people who you inherited your names from. Naruto said and leaned back, knowing he had their full attention. Bakodo the Kami of Substitution. From my understanding, she was wickedly difficult to track on the battlefield, almost dancing around her opponents because they could never hit her. Naruto's eyes settled on Makoto for a moment. And Shisui of the body flicker technique. He was just as difficult to track, but he used a more advanced technique, leaving less behind to give his opponent an idea of where he went. Naruto settled his eyes on Shisui for a moment. Both were Chiha, and both very rarely used their eyes. And lastly, for the log's sake, stick to one another. Naruto said simply putting his hands on their shoulders and kneeling down before them. You two are siblings. Don't fight, don't argue. Work through your problems, you two are a team and your family. One day, I want to fight you both at the same time, and I want to see you both weave in and out of another like a well-oiled machine. Naruto told them. He was glad to see them both nod and look up at him. One last piece of advice, around kids your age, just act like a normal nine-year-old. Naruto said. Don't let your name get in your way, just play and have fun. He told them before sitting on the bench once more. He made a shooing motion with his hands and watched them walk off. Kids were so honest, and their honesty made something relax in Naruto a bit. What he wouldn't give for a child of his own to dote upon Naruto palmed his eyes again. It wasn't happening. He was going to finish the mission and then head back to his cell. At least there he knew how the world worked. Outside. Outside he was lost. Hinata-chan Naruto whispered a little bit. Deep inside his cell, Kurama frowned at his container's actions. It wasn't good, Naruto needed to hold on to his anger, his hate. She betrayed you Naruto, never forget that. Once a betrayer, always a betrayer. She does not deserve mercy, nor does she deserve you. This entire village does not deserve you. Even those children from the Achiha will betray you one day. Hirama spoke to his container, not wanting the human to lose sight of their goals. Hirama put his head on his paws and thought about the human's actions. Having Naruto kill those two wouldn't be possible. They were no doubt watched by the entire village like hawks. He would bide his time, time was all he had anymore. Chapter 3. Sasuke. Naruto stayed sitting at his bench, watching over the Achiha twins. He could hear Kurama's whispers, the dark whispers in the recesses of his mind, and he could see their blood splattered over his body as he stood over their bodies. He put his palm to his eyes, trying to drive the images away. He could see their dead eyes looking up at him, no longer full of life, but full of fear instead. Naruto clenched his hand tight, digging his nails into his scalp. He even smelled the scent of blood, could feel its stickiness coating his hands as he butchered the two children. He took so long dispelling the images that it soon became nighttime, and the point was mood anyways, the children were ushered home by undoubtedly their mother who wouldn't want to speak with him anyways. With the coolness of the night, Naruto leaned back against the bench and began to watch those in Konoha once more. As night fell, he began to see the couples of Konoha walking around the park a bit. Naruto growled a bit, they were in the middle of a war, where Konoha kept sending troops to the front lines to fight against the Zetsu army that was no doubt weaker without the brain, and couples were worried more about romance with a late night stroll through the park. He could kill them, his crimes would be absolved when he was done with the three Achiha, but he remembered a time that he had done much the same. The memories flashed behind his eyes and he could blot them out. 
Blood splattered against the cream-colored walls, he could smell the stomach contents from where he slashed through the stomach. Naruto bolted up in his hospital bed gagging a bit as he put his hands to his head. Kami it felt so real. Naruto whispered a bit, but his hands were not stained red, he was not sticky with drying blood. He had been in the hospital for about three days now. Naruto got up out of the bed and headed into the bathroom. He turned to hot water on and rubbed it against his face a bit, even used a cup to drink the hot water. The steam rose up and fogged up the mirror a bit, and Naruto reached up and wiped it with his hand. He was taken aback by the crimson slit eyes looking at him. Naruto wiped away, revealing his face only with more feral features. Kaiubi. Naruto asked surprised by the turn of events. The image in the mirror didn't mouth the word as Naruto spoke, but answered nodding its head. What are you doing to me? Naruto demanded. He never had such vivid dreams before. Never had he smelled the blood, tasted it. The image raised a clawed hand up and touched the glass where it was still fogged up. It drew its finger in an obvious kanji, but Naruto couldn't make it out. He raised his hand up as well, and together they wrote the kanji, and it cut through the steam against the glass, making it clear and legible for Naruto to read. Nothing. Naruto shook his head, he couldn't believe it. You're lying. He shouted. You have to be lying. I've never had those types of thoughts before, I've never killed anyone. Ayubi simply smirked in the mirror, shaking his head slowly to Naruto's statement. Naruto let out a loud yell and punched the mirror, shattering it and cutting his hand. He held his hand over the sink, his hand shaking and dripping in blood. He saw the doctors rush in and looked at him. I'm fine, just just go. He told them as he began to remove the shards of glass from his hand, he heard the door open again and heard as the doctors left. Was his reaction just then a response to being told the truth? Was he really having such disturbing thoughts and dreams of slaughtering helpless people? Was he really a monster like Kanoha made him out to be? Naruto wrapped his hand when he got all the glass out of it and headed back to his bed. Tsunade was going to be pissed when she found out about his hand. He could practically hear her nagging about how he set back the time he would be recovering for. Naruto's hand shook a bit and he was having difficulty focusing though. The bloody still smelled the blood. Kill them, kill them before they have a chance. So what if you go to jail? Naruto's head rose up as he heard the voice. He couldn't listen to the voice, it only wanted to bring him pain. Naruto massaged his temples and reached over, grabbing a few of the cards on his nightstand. Shikamaru had put one there, Kakashi, and even Hinata. He opened the card and looked at the flowing script of Hinata's handwriting. But as he looked through the rest of the cards, he noticed he didn't have one from Sakura. Hell, even Gara and his siblings had left him a card, but Sakura hand. He leaned his head back against the railing of the bed a bit, thinking to himself. She will never care for you, you're all alone. Eventually everyone will pass you by. Face the facts, the one you love has given you a concussion, just for asking her out, your so-called brother has come close to killing you three times, your sensei, all three of them, haven't cared to teach you anything. Naruto rubbed his eyes, trying to block out the voice in his head once more. It was harder than it sounded, especially since he knew Kaiubi wouldn't be ignored. Naruto needed something to do, desperately needed something to do. I hate hospitals. He shouted before making a clone. The clone then leapt out the window, not wanting to stick around and wanting to get something for its creator to do. Sleep was out of the question, Kaiubi would just give him dreams of more blood and bodies. So the clone headed out to do something. It paused in an alley and used the transformation to turn into a basic-looking individual that had black straight hair and a pair of brown eyes. The clone walked through the streets, patiently looking around and avoiding people as much as possible. The clone didn't have any money, so it wasn't going to be able to go to Ichiraku's, not that it would do that to the original anyways, that was messed up on a whole other level. The clone found his way to the memorial stone near training ground 7, where Kakashi was standing and reading his book. Naruto dropped his transformation. Yo. He called out to his sensei who seemed surprised, even turning to look at him. Naruto. Kakashi asked surprised. What are you doing out of the bed? I know you hate hospitals, but even you must know how messed up you are. Kakashi said actually looking up from his book to pay attention to the blonde. Technically, I am, well the boss is. I'm just a clone out finding stuff for boss to do while we wilt away in a bed. The clone said with a rueful grin. He didn't have the nerve to tell Kakashi about what the civilian council planned. Kakashi picked up on the rueful grin and narrowed his eye a bit. You seem troubled Naruto. Is there anything I can do to help? Kakashi asked. Naruto thought about the offer and was about to decline when something else popped into his head. Yeah, actually. I have two things I want help with. First, can you teach me the earth release? Double suicide decapitation technique you used against Sasuke during the bell test. Akashi thought about it. Why? Just out of curiosity. He asked flipping pages in his book. Naruto offered a shrug and then gave a made-up excuse on the spot. 
Seems I don't really have a jutsu repertoire you know. I know summoning, transformation, substitution, Rasengan, and the shadow clones. I know a lot of those are high level techniques, but I don't have a whole lot of basic skills that supplement me. That was the first one I really saw that really influenced me to an extent. Bakashi listened to the reasoning, he supposed it was fine to teach the blonde that particular jutsu. He tucked his book away and pulled out a blank strip of scroll. He also grabbed a pen and clicked it down before writing the instructions down for the earth release. Double suicide decapitation technique before tossing it to the blonde. Naruto caught the scroll and glanced it over before rolling it up again as Kakashi pulled out his book to read again. I also want to talk to you about girls Naruto said, a little sheepishly. Bakashi raised an eyebrow and actually looked up from his book to the slightly blushing Naruto. Ho ho is little Naruto-chan becoming a man. Naruto gave his sensei a deadpan stare. You do know I have committed the scroll you just gave me to memory. I can use thousands of shadow clones at once your porn is in grave danger. It was a bluff, he hadn't memorized the scroll yet. Bakashi quickly realized what the blonde was implying. With that sort of resources, Naruto could quite easily drag Kakashi into the ground and steal the smut before destroying it in front of the copy nin. Or worse Naruto would sink the warehouse full of itcha itcha. Kakashi gave a slight cough. Okay, what is it you want to talk about? Naruto began to pace, hanging his head a bit. How do you know if a girl likes you? He asked straightforward. And please sensei, I'm looking for real advice here. Bakashi frowned under his mask a bit. He could almost hear the pleading tone in Naruto's voice. I take it you've been thinking about Sakura's interactions with you? Kakashi asked and got a nod. He tucked his book away once more. Okay, these may seem like strange questions, but did Tsunade Sama or Jureya Sama give you the talk? Naruto groaned and palmed his forehead. I went to Shizun Nichan when Jureya tried to do it. Kakashi mentally nodded. It likely would have been best to go to probably the most mature of the three people the blonde had traveled with for a while. So you know what a virgin is, right? Naruto nodded simply. These were awkward and strange questions, and he failed to see how they correlated to his original question. Okay, then I will be straightforward and honest with you. I am not a virgin Naruto, however I also grew up during a time of war when it is ill-advised to really get romantically involved with people. In the 13 years since the Kaiubi attack, I have had few romantic relationships. I am not the greatest person to go to for romantic advice. But I can give you this much at least, try to limit your partner preference to around your age. It's not illegal to marry someone older or even younger if both parties are consenting adults, which usually means 16 or a shinobi. It is frowned upon however to marry older or younger, and while marriage is a steep step to take, eventually it will likely happen. Bakashi said and noticed the blonde giving a very focused look. Then look for reactions from a girl. Kakashi continued getting a frown from the blonde. A punch is not a positive reaction. What are positive reactions are things like blushing, a hint of shyness, perhaps drawing strength from your words, getting a fire in their eyes when you're insulted. Bakashi had good money on the betting pool that Naruto would figure out Hinata's crush on him, and while it was completely against the rules of outright telling the blonde a little push in the right direction wasn't. Lastly, think what you want in a girl. Kakashi said honestly. Not just beauty preferences, or else I would have been married a long time ago, but also personality. Do you want someone blunt, brash, yells a lot, seems easily angered, unwilling to compromise? Naruto thought of all the Kanoichi around his age. Hinata, Ino, Sakura, Tenten, even Tamari. Past that, he really hadn't interacted with other girls around his age in the academy, and AM was too close to him to consider going out with. He then scratched out Tamari. Tamari lived in another village, it wouldn't work that well. Thanks, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto said, offering a wave and running off. The advice had given him something to think about, but he needed more help. Before he left the fields, he turned into his civilian look before heading to the academy. It was out for the day, but if he knew Aruka, then the man would be elbow deep in grading homework. Sure enough, Naruto was right, watching the man in his office chew on the back of a red pen as he graded some homework. Naruto glanced around the hallways before dropping his transformation and knocking on the door and entering. Hey, Aruka-sensei. Naruto? Aruka asked surprised. Shouldn't you be at the hospital? The Chunin asked. Naruto narrowed his eyes a bit. Were his sensei conspiring against him? I'm a clone. Naruto said simply. Naruka nodded. Bored out of your mind and needed something to do huh? Yeah that sounds like what you would do. Naruka said before he set his pen down while Naruto took the seat in front of him, usually reserved for upset parents or in trouble kids. What can I do for you Naruto? Naruto ran his hand through his hair a bit. Well, I heard from someone that you're a bit of a water specialist. Naruka sighed. No Naruto, I can't teach you any powerful water jutsu. He said simply. Naruto shook his head. 
I don't want a powerful water jutsu, I need something supplementary. He said a little sheepishly, knowing for a long time he had only wanted the strongest techniques. But he had learned, since his start, that the basics could kill. Aruka sounded surprised for a moment. Well, I could teach you if I know it. What do you want to learn? He supposed he could give something to help the blonde if it was supplementary. The hiding in mist technique? Naruto asked a little hopefully. Aruka paused. That was one he had, but he was curious. Why that particular technique Naruto? Naruto clenched his hands a bit. Mamachi Zabuza, one of the seven swordsmen of mist, we encountered him during our first C-ranked mission, and he used that against us. I felt I felt so helpless I was unable to do anything in that mist. I can't ask you to use it on me, so that I can learn to fight in that mist, so I want to learn it so I can do it myself. Naruto offered a slight grin. Plus, I'm pretty good at stealth. I painted the Hokage monument in broad daylight and was in an orange jumpsuit, I was almost done before anyone even noticed. Aruka snorted. He remembered that and he supposed it was true. Only he had eventually caught the blonde. Okay, okay. I'll give you a scroll. Aruka then took out a short scroll and wrote the instructions down. It was good to see Naruto taking the supplementary skills seriously now. Naruto bit his lip, looking up to his first sensei and his older brother figure as he took the scroll and tucked it with Kakashi's. I I need a bit of help on something sensei. I need some advice on girls. Aruka paled a little bit, but it was mostly covered by his dark skin tone. Please don't ask me to give him the talk, please oh mighty log, don't ask me to give him the talk. I've never asked for much I'll help how I can, if I can. Aruka said. Naruto looked down, his bangs covering his eyes a little bit. Shizun Nichan, Sunade Bachan's apprentice, gave me the talk already. But how do I know if a girl likes me? He asked. Kakashi had given some good advice, but maybe Aruka would be able to give him some better advice. Aruka scratched his head and began to mentally plan on planting two dozen saplings in praise to the log. Well to be honest, girls can be pretty fickle. What they like now, they might not like later. Aruka told Naruto much to the blonde's confusion. But if I was going to offer some advice, be yourself. Show your confidence, but not the arrogance and I know you know the difference. If the girl laughs a little at your actions, not mockingly but seems to find them actually funny, then you might want to consider asking her out. Naruka offered. He didn't exactly have a whole lot of experience in the dating pool himself. Naruto again began to think about everything, putting together everything from Kakashi and now Aruka. Thanks sensei, I'll let you get to work on that homework now. Naruto said and walked out. As far as girls went, Sakura wasn't displaying any of the things that Aruka and Kakashi had told him. Naruto just needed something to think about other than what the Kaiubi was practically feeding him in his sleep, and girls seemed like a viable option. The other, of course, would be the two jutsu he had gotten from Kakashi and Aruka. Naruto then headed off towards the hot springs, figuring that Jiraiya would be peeping on the girls inside. Sure enough, Naruto tapped his foot a bit and went over to Jiraiya. Hiro Senen. Naruto said in a simple tone, quiet as not to alert the people on the other side of the wall. He knew better than to peek, peeking was a death warrant. Not now Gaki. Jiraiya said, scribbling down some information on his notepad before looking with his spyglass. I'm busy researching. Naruto sighed and glanced at the scrolls in his possession. The hiding in mist seemed rather simple to do. He practiced it on a low level until he got the mist thick enough to cover his feet. It took all of 20 minutes to do so. He turned back to his last teacher. Hiro Senen, I would yell out super pervert unless you direct your attention to me. Naruto said. Jiraiya swallowed what felt like a lump in his chest before turning to look at the blonde. Why was he standing on the stream of water? You do, and you'll also get beaten up. He said as though that would deter the blonde. I know the hiding in mist technique. And I can do it just fine. Naruto said simply, tapping his foot on the surface of the water. Jiraiya paled a little bit. The little shit could run away under the cover over the mist, hell he could yell it out from the safety of the mist, and the women wouldn't be able to accuse him, but they would have one super pervert to deal with. Okay Gaki, two questions. First, why are you out of the hospital? Sune told me the extent of the damage. Second, what is it you want? My sensei have to be conspiring against me. All three of them asked that same very question. None of you thought I'm a clone. Seriously? Naruto asked and shook his head, unable to believe his sensei. Naruto Jiraiya said looking to the blonde. Creating a shadow clone in your condition is dangerous. Naruto threw his hands out a bit. I feel fine Hiro Senen. He said after a while. It sucks to be bedridden and I'm bored out of my freaking mind. Jiraiya winced a bit. He could understand where the blonde was coming from, a little bit at least. Okay, relax Gaki, relax. What do you want? He asked. Naruto shrugged. Well, I meant to be your apprentice right, think you can teach me a few jutsu. 
Direya heard the words, but he heard it from someone else and gave a wince, turning back and looking at his notebook. Despite his spying on the girls in the bath, he hadn't been writing for the next itcha itcha. He was writing notes for a second tale of an utterly gutsy ninja. Minato he thought a little ashamed at his lack of godfathering. Alright Gaki, come with me. I'll give you a test. Dureya sat and hopped down from the tree. Naruto was surprised when instead of going out towards one of the training fields, they instead went to a small apartment. Jiraiya opened the door, and Naruto felt a sense of belonging how that was weird. Naruto glanced around, surprised at how sparse it was, but there were a few pictures on the mantel, and Naruto meandered over to them, looking with surprise at a younger Jiraiya standing with his team, the fourth Hokage there as well. Team Jiraiya had had a nice ring to it surprisingly. Naruto then saw Team Harazin and another with Team Harazin standing with a summoned creature in their hands. Naruto was about to lift a picture that was face down when Jiraiya spotted him. I'd ask you not to touch that one Gaki and let it lay there. Naruto jumped a bit, hearing Jiraiya's voice. What is with the pictures laying face down? He asked. They bring up a lot of painful memories, many of them are my greatest regrets and failures. Someday, I might show you a few, but for now please leave it be Naruto. Jiraiya said his voice full of pain. Naruto heard the pain and moved away from the pictures. He would respect Jiraiya's wishes with the pictures. He moved over to the small table and sat down. What sort of test is this going to be? Jiraiya pulled out a plain red book and passed it over to Naruto. Using that beginner's manual, make me a low-powered explosive tag, a ceiling tag, and a modified explosive tag. You have an hour. Jiraiya said as he also passed along the paper and the ink for it. As my apprentice, I expect you to use three things at least. The toads, the Rasengan, and seals. Even the Yandame Hokage used toads and sealing before he taught me the Rasengan. Naruto looked at the bottle and saw Jiraiya hold up a stopwatch. It seemed when Naruto opened the book, the test would start. He counted his supplies first, looking at the paper. He had plenty of space to work with, a standard 8 and a half by 11 piece of paper. And the inkwell was completely full. Naruto took a deep breath, watching Jiraiya. Naruto flipped open the book just as Jiraiya clicked the stopwatch. Naruto began to scan the pages. It showed some basic symbols, symbols that would allow for the usage of seals. By altering the symbols, he could change how the seal works, as long as he made sure that his chakra read the symbol as that symbol. If he had a writing quirk, the chakra would still read it as the proper symbol. This was written in by someone on the margins. Surprisingly though, Naruto found himself delving deeper into the ceiling, almost instinctively knowing how he would change each seal to fit the functions. Naruto flipped over to where he would learn how to make an explosive tag. His eyes roamed over the words and the symbols, it was like something awakened in his blood, something that hadn't been around before. Jiraiya watched impressed as the blonde moved on to reading about the explosive tag in about 10 minutes. It seemed he had inherited both his father's natural ability to use seals and his mother's natural ability being an Uzumaki. You'd be proud of the Gaki, Minato Jiraiya thought with a none too small hint of pride. Naruto grabbed the paper and the ink brush. His mind reeled at the possibilities before him, oh how easy it would be to make an explosive that could level the entire village. He blinked his eyes. Focus Naruto. He told himself before he started to quickly draw out the explosive tag, charging the brush and ink with his chakra, allowing the tag to be charged. Jiraiya watched nodding a slight bit. Naruto's hand was flowing, he had seen when Kashina wrote seals a few times, and she always had that flowing script like Naruto was having. When the blonde was done, Jiraiya accepted the explosive tag, looking it over. He created a shadow clone and passed it off to test. Next, Naruto began to read over the words for a storage seal, reading how it could be used in conjunction with an explosive tag to do something more devastating. Senbin launched from a tag, or kunai, things far more dangerous even. But a basic storage seal, Naruto began to write again, before he set the book on the tag and sealed it up before Jiraiya's eyes, obviously surprising the white-haired Sanin. Naruto then grabbed the last piece of paper and quickly wrote out another two seals on it, before heading into the kitchen. Jiraiya listened as the blonde ran the tap water for a moment. Jiraiya pulled out a few scrolls from his bag and sealed them with the blonde's book. Three earth release jutsu sounded like enough from him, and they would likely irritate the blonde at being so weak. But then again, the blonde already learned summoning and the Rasengan from him. Naruto came back and slapped the final seal down on the table. Jiraiya clicked his stopwatch. It had taken the blonde all of 35 minutes to learn and make seals. It was impressive. He got the memories from his clone that the low-powered seal did work. In fact, it had about the force of a firecracker. Jiraiya held up the last seal. Why did the blonde run his water for this one? He shrugged and set it off, setting it on his floor. He doubted it would explode with much force. Maybe a small scuff on the floor, but then again given Minato's experiments in the house, the floor already had a lot of scuffs. 
it didn't explode like he thought, instead it was like a localized spark was set off and out from the storage seal, a thick mist poured out in great quantities. The tag that contained the hiding and mist technique. Now Jiraiya was definitely impressed. Alright Gaki, you proved your point. Jiraiya said, much to the joy of the blonde clone. Here, I'll also give you the novice, intermediate, expert, and master level books and sealing. Please, please read them in order and don't try to do something in the next books until I clear you to. Jiraiya said. Also, you can create the seals, but don't activate them, especially in the hospital. Tsunade will kill us both. Naruto nodded and watched as Jiraiya sealed the aforementioned books inside the paper Naruto, used as a sealing tag. I also want to talk to you despite asking about it twice before it was still strange and weird. Girls Naruto said and blushed a bit, glancing at his feet and shuffling. Jiraiya gave a perverted giggle before pulling an orange book out and setting it on the table. This should be all you need to know about girls and women Naruto. I'm proud of you Gaki, finally becoming a man. Naruto threw the book back at the perverted sage. I'm serious hero Senen. I need some genuine advice here. Jiraiya chuckled at the blonde's outburst. Alright Gaki, alright. Jiraiya offered a rueful smile as he looked at the table a bit. I want to tell you a story about the dead last that vied for the affections of the top Kanoichi of his graduating class. Naruto blinked a bit and sat down. Well, damn, that sounded like a familiar tale. Ami, Tsunade was always a beautiful girl, Jiraiya shook his head. Was a bit flat-chested in my opinion for a while. He said getting the blonde to snort. But every attempt, every time I asked her out, she would always just brush me off Jiraiya shook his head. It was fine. I just kept trying, and she kept brushing me off. Even Sensei thought I was stupid at times. Wow this was a very familiar tale for Naruto. Who'd have thought? She was always vying for the affection of Orochimaru before he turned into an insane bastard, but not in that fangirl way that I see a whole lot nowadays. Jiraiya shook his head. Then she met Dan, Cat and Dan, Shizun's uncle. My advice to you is this Gaki, don't be afraid to try and try again, but know when to give up. Jiraiya offered. At least on women. Jiraiya said and reached out, patting his head. At least you're not as bad with women as my last student. You know to ask for guidance. Naruto blinked for a second. The Yandane was bad with women. Jiraiya snorted. Absolutely terrible. It took his crush getting kidnapped before he finally worked up enough nerve to ask her out. He was shy. Around his crush. Naruto asked suddenly more attentive. He wanted to know more about his hero. Jiraiya chuckled a little bit. Absolutely. But his crush was also loud, brash, and even denser than you can be, probably didn't pay any damn attention to the fact he liked her. It took him saving her from being kidnapped for her to finally find out. But then again, she also called him flaky and weird from time to time. She also shaped up pretty well into a fine Kinoichi. How uh, didn't he know someone that was shy around him? Didn't he call her weird? He'd let the original figure it out more. Alright Iro Senen, I better get back so the boss doesn't try to escape himself. Jiraiya gave a small wave as he watched the blonde walk away. He hoped the blonde would enjoy the gifts. They would soon be leaving on a three-year trip, at least once he did a bit more research. The clone snuck back to the hospital, carrying the scrolls and the sealing paper he had. He leapt in through the window and dispelled the transformation. Finally. Naruto called out at the sight of his clone. It then dispelled and his eyes closed as he sorted through the memories. Huh, he was only expecting the jutsu, not the girl advice. Still, it was all pretty good advice. Naruto sat back and thought on all the things that his sensei had told him. She acts shy she grew stronger at my words, she grew withdrawn when I called her weird, but perked up when I said I liked people like her Naruto had all the pieces of the puzzle now, a puzzle called Hinata. He drew his legs to his chest, could he like Hinata like that? Damn, it was so difficult. Was he looking for someone to latch onto or actually care about? Was he just upset that he knew Sakura would never give him the time of day? But then again, wasn't that what dating was for, to tell if you actually liked the person? Naruto smacked the sides of his face. Whatever. He called out as he sat back and unsealed the beginning sealing book. He was surprised at the four scrolls that came with it, and he fumbled with them. He looked over the four jutsu that Jiraiya gave him and looked a little surprised. Earth release. Underground projection fish technique. Earth release. Hiding an earth technique. Earth release. Hiding like a mole technique. They're all low rank supplementary techniques, but with the double suicide decapitation from Kakashi Sensei, I should be able to use them pretty good. He said thinking about it. Naruto set them to the side and began to read his book, he was actually enjoying learning the arts of sealing. It brought a sense of nostalgia for some reason. It even conjured a place surrounded by whirlpools to his mind as well, and it was relaxing. He could block out the Kaiubi's incessant images of death and destruction. Naruto closed the book when he heard the door open, and Tsunade walked in. She paused at seeing the books and the scrolls. 
Soon Aid began to tap her foot a bit, folding her arms under her impressive bust. I don't suppose you mind telling me exactly what it is you're doing and how you got those. I don't think you're stupid enough to actually get out of this room, nonetheless go training. Naruto knew that tone, it promised a lot of pain if she didn't like his answer. I was bored, I feel relatively fine, so I knew I had to wait for you to clear me. I sent a shadow clone out and rested here. He patted the bed for emphasis. I talked with Hirosen and Kakashi Sensei and Aruka Sensei and got a few scrolls out of it. Hirosen and even gave me books on sealing. Tsunade nodded, not looking convinced at all. Get up. She told the blonde, who immediately complied. She walked over and touched the bed where he had been sitting. She knew such a thing would have taken time, and she had been notified about two hours ago of the blonde punching the mirror. Two hours that would be needed to run around the village and have a conversation with three people and get jutsu scrolls from them. Yet, the bed was still warm. Warm enough that his body couldn't possibly have warmed it up in the ten minutes or so he would have been back for. Okay Gaki, I believe you. She said and watched the blonde sit back down properly. Show me your hand. Naruto winced, knowing that tone. He held up the hand he had cut up earlier, and she gave a few tsking sounds as she looked it over. I I overreacted at something. Clearly. Tsunade said somewhat amused as she began to heal the hand. She then used a diagnostic jutsu to check the blonde out, make sure everything was still functioning properly. It didn't look like the blonde had done any damage to himself by training or anything, but his recovery was still taking time. Hey botch Anne, can I ask you something? Naruto asked as he watched the Tsunade work on him a bit. What do you want to ask me? Tsunade asked, not even distracted as she did some work to make sure Naruto would heal about normal speed and that he would get out of the hospital in the time frame she had told Den. Any longer, and the grease ball might think something was up. Any sooner and they'd just enact their plan sooner. How did you know you liked Shizun Nichan's uncle? Naruto asked somewhat innocently, but seriously. Tsunade faltered a bit and her legendary chakra control screwed up for a second. What was that Gaki? You're asking me about dating advice. Naruto shrugged. Kakashi Sensei says he doesn't have a whole lot of experience, Iruka Sensei doesn't seem to have a whole lot of experience, and need I mention Iro Senen. He may have given a bit of advice that wasn't perverted, but he tried to pawn that book off on me first. Tsunade sighed. She supposed she did have the most experience, she had been engaged to Dan for a time. But damn, her fellow blonde tore open some painful wounds that never fully healed. She closed her eyes a bit. Every time I was around Dan it just it just felt right. It's hard to explain Gaki, but you'll get it if you ever feel that sensation. It was like I knew I was safe and warm, even in the middle of war. Thinking about losing Dan always devastated me, and it hurt, like someone wrapped their fist around my heart. When he smiled at me, I just I couldn't help smiling back, and it always gave me this warm fuzzy feeling inside. Even when he was being an idiot, he always seemed to know how to make me smile. How was Dan an idiot? Naruto asked a little confused. Tsunade shook her head. Just little things Gaki. No relationship is perfect, there will always be ups, downs, extreme ups, and extreme downs. I can remember the first time I came home, absolutely drunk off my ass, I could barely see straight, not to mention walking. Tsunade looked back on the memory. Some bad things were said, one of them he called me a drunk and said I needed to drink less, we we argued pretty badly for about a week. Then he found out that was the anniversary of Nawaki's death. He knew he had been in the wrong when he did and he made it up to me. Tsunade ruffled Naruto's hair. He encouraged me to drink less, but nothing that would push the boundaries again. Naruto thought on what Tsunade was saying. Every relationship had its ups and its downs huh? He was surprised to hear about Dan a little bit, he sounded like a great guy to meet. He even seemed to have that Kakashi cool guy type feel by the sound of him. I'm sorry if I brought up some painful memories Bachan. Naruto said softly. Relax Gaki, you needed some guidance, and I gave it. After all, who are you supposed to go to? That perverted teammate of mine. They shared a grin at that. Jiraiya's side profession got absolutely no respect. Well, I've patched you up as best as I could. You'll just need to let your body naturally heal now. So limit your shadow clones. No more than two a day. Well, at least he got some each day. Thanks Spachan. He told her. Tsunade lightly bopped the blonde brat on his head. I'm not that old. She said before walking out of the room. Naruto laid his head back on the pillow, thinking about all of their words. A warm feeling huh? He asked and thought about it a bit more. He desperately wished his parents were around so they could help him out, but it wasn't to be. Naruto would be lying though if he said he didn't enjoy the challenge of it though. But he was stumbling around in the dark trying to figure things out, he needed something a candle or something to help him. That night Naruto had another dream. He could feel the blood splatter his face, and he wiped it off with his shirt, staring down at the look of shock on Kakashi's face. 
Garuka was staring at him, terrified and chained up with chakra suppression seals on him. Jurei was beheaded, his head sitting forever on the fence of a hot spring stained red with the blood of the female bodies inside. Naruto jolted away clutching at his chest as the sun began to rise. He panted heavily and his brow was drenched with sweat, not blood. But it wasn't Jurei's eyes that haunted him, or Kakashi's eyes no, it had been the image of a nude pale-eyed woman being taken by a man with nine tails, a look of utter bliss on her face. Get out of my head. He said almost whimpering as he curled his knees to his chest. The startling fact was the man with nine tails looked much like him complete with a seal on his stomach. Where were these dreams coming from? Was he was he truly like that? Was he like that deep down? Did he want to murder each of those that had wronged him? Naruto felt his stomach churn at the thought. Naruto spent an hour, curled up and crying, trying to get the images out of his mind and his eyes. Something settled in the pit of his stomach. He had been in the hospital for almost a week now, he needed something to do that would give him good memories, good dreams. The hospital wasn't that place. Naruto's head turned and he relaxed a bit as he heard the door open. He was surprised to see Hinata there, another card in her hands. She seemed surprised to see him awake, and she blushed deeply. Hey Hinata-chan. Naruto said to the girl. She smiled a bit and seemed to blush a bit more, drawing herself inside of her jacket a bit more. And Naruto-kun, I am so h happy you're awake. She said stuttering a bit, trying to draw some courage for herself. Positive reactions are things like blushing, a hint of shyness as Kakashi's words came to Naruto's mind. She did blush quite a bit, and she was shy. He remembered Jurei's story about the yandame around his crush. Yeah, I'm glad to be awake too. He said and smiled a bit to her, waving her in. His crush was loud, brash, and could be dumber than you are at times Jurei's words flitted through Naruto's mind, reminding him he hadn't been quite that observant. I be brought you tea this sea card. Hinata said, handing Naruto the card with shaky hands. She looked worried about him, seeing the bandages around his body. Naruto accepted the card and opened it, it was a simple get well soon card, but it also had Hinata's flowing signature inside. Something warmed inside of him. He frowned a bit and looked up. He shook his head and offered Hinata a smile. His eyes wandered up to her forehead for a second, and he thought about the caged bird seal on her, and his heart clenched tight. He could feel rage boiling through him. Why did he think about that? What was this feeling? And Naruto-kun? Hinata asked with a whisper, watching her crush's face and eyes go through a myriad of emotions for a second. Anger was there, confusion, something else was there too, but she couldn't figure it out. Sorry, Hinata-chan. Just thinking for a moment. Can can I ask you a personal question? Naruto asked, obviously being hesitant because he didn't want Hinata to get hurt by his bluntness. Hinata twiddled her fingers together before clasping her hands in front of her chest a bit. Yes sure. She said, offering a small smile. Naruto inhaled a little bit, trying to get the fluttering sensation out of his stomach. Why didn't anyone warn him of it? It could have been really useful information. Do Naruto began before he gave a sigh and tried again. Do you like me Hinata? As is more than a friend. Like the way I have Sakura. Naruto refrained from using suffixes to the names, wanting to know what Hinata thought. Hinata's face drained of color, realizing what Naruto was asking. Her heart had thundered in her chest, and she began to breathe quickly, close to hyperventilating. She she wasn't expecting the blonde to ask, yet. Naruto reached out and gently took Hinata's hands away from her chest, being careful not to touch more than he meant to. Hinata, deep breaths, inhale, exhale, slowly. He told her. Hinata inhaled through her nose, much like she had been taught and exhaled slowly through her mouth, barely following Naruto's words. She was shaking, she could feel it, and she could feel calluses on the blonde's hands as he gently stroked her knuckles a bit. I'm sorry, I know this is like interrupting an intricate dance routine with a sledgehammer to the knee. Naruto said, trying to use a bit of humor. Hinata gave a weak smile at it, a smile nonetheless. She took a deep breath and exhaled slowly, stilling herself and finding steel in herself from her crush. Yes, I do like you Naruto-kun. She said softly but without a stutter not wanting to cheapen her words. I like you in the way that you like Sakura-san, perhaps more so. Naruto felt something in the pit of his stomach relax, and his heart beat harder in his chest. I I want to take you out sometime. Naruto said suddenly, making Hinata's eyes widen quite a bit. But we would have to take a few precautions, and it's not because I don't want to be with you. He promised her. W what sort of p precautions and Naruto-kun? She asked softly barely able to keep from fainting at his words. I'll have to send a shadow clone in my place. I don't want to invoke Tsunade Bachan's wrath at getting out of bed, even for a date with a pretty girl. Naruto had a faint dusting of red on his cheeks at calling Hinata pretty, and she had a healthy blush as well from his words. Second, I'm at the very least going to have to use a transformation. I can't go into too many details, but people don't like me. Hinata nodded, biting her lip. 
I w will use a t transformation as w well then. My f family m might n not like me g going s and place w with someone like t that. Naruto nodded softly, he understood that. It was Wednesday how about Friday night. He asked her after a while. I'll meet you by Ichirakus. I'll be in the form of a red-haired civilian with green eyes. No need to make his transformation the same every time, someone would catch on. Despite her heart thundering in her chest, the thought of eating Raymond with a blonde brought a small wave of disappointment, but she supposed the first date couldn't be perfect. After all, how was the blonde to know any better when he had no one to teach him any etiquette? Still, the thought of having a date with Naruto it was enough for her to push the disappointment away. F Friday, and night. She said in confirmation. B black-haired, B brown-eyed C civilian, at 6 o'clock. She asked. Naruto nodded then. At 6 then. He told her, praying he could make it to that time. The fox would no doubt be screwing with his head quite a bit. Over the next few days, Naruto worked hard on seals, staying up as much as humanly possible so that he wouldn't listen to the Kaiubi. It seemed to have calmed down quite a bit, but still when he slept he saw grisly scenes that he wanted nothing to do with. When he finished with the first book in sealing, he practiced making several seals, getting everything to work. Hiraya took them away to test them when he came by. On Friday, at 4.30, he sent out a clone to go home. It showered and dressed in the usual orange jumpsuit before turning into a redeated civilian with green eyes, the shade Sakura had. He had the hair straight and pulled back from his face. He grabbed the substantial amount of money he had before heading out. It wasn't that he couldn't buy anything, it was more like he didn't really buy that much. Instant Raymond was fairly cheap and he still got a monthly stipend, though reduced from what he originally had. Naruto then headed out to Ichiraku's and stood across the street from it, leaning casually against a wall. Time just ticked by, he could pick up a second hand on the clock in the Raymond stand tick tick tick, it was almost an ominous sound. Then Naruto-kun. He heard faintly to his right and he turned to see a shy normal-looking civilian beside him. Anata chan Naruto asked in a more subdued manner as he turned to look at her. Getting a nod, he offered her a smile. They were both dressed casually, him in a black shirt and a pair of blue pants. She was in a white blouse-like shirt and a pair of black pants. Naruto turned and offered her an arm, just something he had seen from time to time. She gave another blush and slipped her arm through his. She was pleasantly surprised when the blonde led her away from the little Raymond stand and instead chose to take her to another restaurant. It wasn't high class or anything fancy, but it was most certainly something different. They ate and talked in hushed tones, nothing about missions or anything, but just stuff about them. Naruto even listened, or seemingly listened, quite intently. She wasn't sure, but it seemed he was genuinely interested, and she slowly felt a building courage inside of her. She was even more surprised when the blonde paid for the meal out of his own pocket before they headed out. They walked around one of the parks in Kanoha for some time, and she even laid her head on his shoulder while they walked and talked. When it was getting late enough for her to need to get home, the blonde escorted her as close to the compound as possible. I had a good time Hinata-chan. Naruto told her, squeezing her hands a bit. I I also got you something. He said. He took a scroll from his pocket and unsealed an orange fox plushie and offered it to her. He had gotten it during his time with Yureya looking for Tsunade. Me too Naruto kun Hinata whispered softly, gazing up to him as he unsealed the plushie. Her eyes widened at it and she hugged it to her chest tightly, thank you. I hope we get to do it again sometime. Naruto had something that worried her past behind his eyes. Yeah, I hope so too. The truth. But I might not be able to for a while, partial truth. Hiro Senen wants to talk me on a training trip when I get better and he's back in Kanoha. Again the truth. Naruto-kun, are you keeping something from me? Hinata asked a little worried about the blonde. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed. Yes. He wouldn't lie to her about that. But it's its big Hinata-chan, and I know I can depend on others, but I'm scared. Naruto said softly. Hinata looked into the blonde's currently green eyes. Dispel your transformation for me. She said and undid her own, gathering as much courage as she possibly could. She glanced around with her by Akigen, making sure no one was nearby. Naruto undid his transformation and looked to Hinata's eyes, there seemed to be something burning inside of them. He was pleasantly surprised when she pressed her lips to his own. It wasn't some romantic passionate kiss of boundless desire, but it was certainly something special and enjoyable. Hinata pulled back from the blonde's lips for a second. I trust you Naruto-kun, and I believe in you. She whispered before tapping his arm with her fingertips, surging chakra into the clone. Naruto got the memories back from his clone, and despite his arm feeling a little tingly, he sat back on the bed and touched his lips softly. I think I think I'm in love. He whispered. He had that warm fuzzy feeling, and he couldn't properly describe it. That night he didn't have any nightmares and managed to sleep peacefully.
Naruto drove his fist into his forehead, hating the memories that those events brought up and the look of fear, shock, and distrust on Hinata's face after that incident. He stood up and stalked away, heading home to go destroy something or eat. He wasn't sure which would happen first. Over the next few days, Naruto trained his body into the ground, ignoring Kurama and ignoring the memories that things brought up. He enjoyed the pain he got from punching something, he enjoyed the blood sliding down his hand when he punched something too hard. After about two weeks, Naruto received an invite from Kiba to a celebration party in regards to his fundraiser for Akamaru. Naruto accepted, deciding that he would go to it. He dressed in a black formal kimono. No doubt it was his father's funeral garbs, but it was effective enough to be formal before he headed to the Inuzuka compound where it was being held. Naruto was understandable surprised when he headed inside and the party seemed to be in full swing. Naruto found a quiet corner to sit at, watching the proceedings. Ino was talking to a group of jonin and they seemed to actually listen to her, telling him that they were probably her team. Choji talked to two guys that looked to be former Anbu or Anbu out of uniform. They just had that stiffness. Shikamaru was playing go against what looked to be his own team, playing three matches at once. Hiba was talking with another team, his current team was playing with their pups. He could see Shino silently conversing with someone else. Hinata was dancing with Itachi, keeping up appearances. When the song was over, she took over watching Mikoto and Shisui while a civilian took her place. Naruto looked up more fully when he saw a wheelchair coming up. For a second, he wasn't sure who was approaching him. Guy. He asked after a while. I had changed a lot in 20 years. First he shaved most of his eyebrows off and they now looked normal. His hair was no longer cut into a bowl cut, instead it was a more normal looking hairstyle and Guy had let it grow out. The man had also changed the green spandex, wearing a black shirt and a pair of green loose-fitting pants. But the man had that exuberance still, but it was more tamed more controlled. Hello Naruto-kun, would you mind if I sat with you? Naruto smiled a bit. The green beast of Konoha. Anytime. He told the man and Naruto watched as the man moved from his wheelchair to the bench Naruto was sitting at. I haven't been called that in over a decade Naruto-kun. It's hard to be the green beast without the leg to perform the tajutsu on. It's why I shaved the eyebrows and allowed my hair to start growing out. Guy said. Naruto turned and furrowed his brow a bit. So the eyebrows and the hair were there for a reason. He figured the spandex also had a reason, offering the most amount of mobility. Yes, my eyebrows, and Lee's for that matter, were so thick for a reason. By stimulating that growth and not trimming them, they act as the perfect traps for sweat that's coming down from the forehead. Guy said with a slight smile. Naruto laughed, he couldn't help it. He had never thought of that. It's all ludicrous it makes sense. He said shaking his head. And the bowl cut. I offered a slight grin. How do most shinobi run? Head down, arms out to the side. The bowl cut offers aerodynamics and by not being thick, when going for the dynamic entry, I'm not being slowed down by my hair which rises up with the wind. How interesting. Naruto said, honestly surprised at what he was hearing. His face sobered a little. So mind talking about what happened. I sighed softly, bowing his head a little bit. I I got in a fight during the war, it was it was an ambush really. Guy looked up. Do you know why I proclaimed Kakashi as my eternal rival? A rivalry that continues to this day. Naruto shook his head. He had been curious, but he never questioned it, just assumed it was another part of Guy's rather strange personality. Growing up, I looked up to Haddock Sakumo. Guy's words caused Naruto's head to whip at the man. He was deceased by the time I really got into my ninja career, but Sakumo had gotten to where he was by pure hard work. I had always been interested in tojutsu, and I worked as hard as I could at it. I even came up with several ways to maximize my abilities in tojutsu, the jumpsuit, the bushy eyebrows, the bowl cut, everything guy looked down for a moment. The Buto used the Ido Tensei ability, in conjunction with several white zetsu halves. One of those that he brought back had been Haddock Sakumo. Naruto bowed his head at guy's words. Kakashi had worn himself out, using Kamui from that eye of his. I was running, getting us away from the battlefield. But Sakumo came from nowhere and hit me from the side. I had a chance to fight a legend, the legend I looked up to. Guy said and ran a hand through his hair a bit. I pulled up his pants leg a bit and showed that half of his calf muscle was torn out, leaving a rough scar. He then dropped it when Naruto had seen enough. I do not know if you know this, but Kakashi used to have a sword called the White Light Chakra Saber, it was his father's signature sword. It broke sometime during a mission Kakashi had with the Yandame Hokage. Somehow, Sakumo had his sword back. I shook his head. I hit him with everything I had. I was running on seven gates and used the morning tiger on him, he got right back up from it. Dynamic entry from a shadow clone and he reformed. Even the violent leaf adamantine strength whirlwind wasn't enough. He then threw out a single kunai and performed the kunai shadow clone technique. 
guy's eyes closed a second. Sakuma was known for immense levels of chakra, and he had refined it to a sharp point, able to control exactly how it went. His single kunai turned into a hundreds. I was forced to perform the morning peacock. It was a distraction, all it was. The white light chakra saber was used then, and I found myself missing most of the muscle to my leg, and I was unable to walk. I have thought of getting a prosthetic from time to time, but I feel that my time has passed. Guy looked at Naruto who was paying rapt attention. It also wouldn't feel right, getting it. Naruto nodded softly. I understand. He told the retired nin and patted him on the back. But even retired, you probably have more skill in your pinky than most of Konoha has in their entire body, or even the gen in the academy sends out. I chuckled lightly before moving to his chair. If you'll excuse me, I wish to go speak with Lee. Naruto inclined his head a bit and watched the man wheel himself away. It was tragic to hear what happened to Konoha's foremost jutsu master. Even Lee would have difficulty surpassing his sensei, but if anyone could do it then it would certainly be Lee. Naruto didn't even move when Kakashi sat down beside him. He was something else that day. Kakashi stated. And despite my nonchalant attitude sometimes, Guy has been a friend. It hurt to have to tell him he would never be able to be a shinobi again. Naruto nodded. He understood the feeling. That's war though. Perhaps Kakashi said before looking down at his lap. I'm not sure I could have done what he did though. Fighting dad, I mean. He clarified. Perhaps. Naruto said, using Kakashi's word. A wise boy once told me that for those who are precious to us, we can achieve true strength. And a wise man once told me that to abandon the mission is to be trash, but to abandon your comrades is to be worse than trash. Kakashi gave a rueful laugh. Haku that boy from Wave. And me. He shook his head a bit. Never thought Abito would turn out that way. I don't think any of us could have expected it. Naruto said after a bit and patted his sensei on the back. I think you should have become a ninja psychologist. Kakashi said with a laugh. You talked Haku and Zabuza down, you talked Gara down. I stomped Sasuke's ass into the ground and dragged him back, so that breaks that theory. Naruto said rather bluntly. Kakashi laughed before standing up and going to dance with Anko. Naruto looked at the woman who seemed to have gotten a fair bit tamer, her hair hanging down her back instead of pulled up into a ponytail. Naruto's vision was then filled with Kurenai. What is this? A reunion with the old sensei? He thought. His right cheek suddenly had a lot of pain, and he was no longer looking at Kurenai, and there was a hush over the party. Kurenai had just smacked him. I'm fine, I deserved it. He called out, letting everyone go back to what they were doing when they were sure that Kurenai wasn't getting hurt. He shifted his eyes to look back to her. Get enough of 20 years of frustration out of your system? He asked. Yes. Kurenai said and sat down beside him. Good. It was never my intention to hurt Hinata. Naruto said as he looked out over the party once more. Perhaps not, but you still did so. You still do so. Kurenai said and looked at the blonde a bit. Naruto shrugged at that one. Hit me again though, and I'll have to hurt you. He said just as Kurenai looked to be about to smack him upside his head. Kurenai's had moved away thankfully. Naruto's eyes were drawn to one of the Go matches. I see a lot of Asuma in him. Kurenai smiled softly. Yes, my little one is all grown up. He took after Shikamaru quite a bit, didn't want to climb to the rank of Jonin. Naruto chuckled a bit. So Shik is the godfather? He asked. Yes, and Asuma wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Kurenai sighed softly. It's rough on him though, not knowing his father, despite what Shikamaru and Kinohimaru tell him. Naruto nodded, thinking a bit. It could be worse. He could not know anyone. He said simply. Kiba's waving you over. Kurenai stood up to go and talk to her former student. Naruto Oji-san. Naruto felt a weight sling around his neck, and he looked down to Mikoto, who was sitting in his lap her arms around his neck. We've missed you at the park Naruto Oji-san. Naruto smiled a bit, watching Shisui walked up. How are you two doing? Shisui gave a small grunt, earning him a bonk on the head from Naruto. What was that for Naruto Oji-san? You sounded like your Sasuke Oji-san, and I'm not afraid to beat that grunt out of you. Naruto said, making Makoto giggle a bit. Shisui sat down beside Naruto on the bench. Tusan has been teaching us a jutsu since we both have two Tama now. Shisui activated his Sharingan showing it off before deactivating it. Tusan has been showing us how to make fireballs. Mikoto said excitedly, bouncing on Naruto's knee a bit before getting off and pushing him over to the side, forcing him between the two twins. Great mini pyrotechnics Naruto thought, shaking his head a bit. Just be careful with those. He told them. Get away from him, both of you. Came a stern voice, and Naruto looked up to see Itachi's civilian wife looking to her children with a bit of fear for their safety and anger that they upset him. But Ka-san, Mikoto started, trying to talk her mother down. No buts, now. She shouted. Naruto touched Mikoto on the head. 
It's okay Makoto-chan, Shisui-chan, listen to your ka-san. Naruto said and watched them go to their mother. You could rid them of that wench, let them be free to interact who they want to Kurama's words floated in his head. It would be oh so easy grab a chopstick and use his wind chakra, launch the projectile through the back of her neck, kill her so easily. Naruto looked away from the mother scolding her children to the dancing area for a little while. He saw Hinata and Itachi dancing once more. Itachi wasn't as close to Hinata as he was with his civilian wife. Naruto stood up and went to the bar, getting some sake and paying for it. He downed the small saucer for a second before heading over to the pair. Would you mind if I cut in? He asked Itachi, looking to Hinata's eyes. Hinata felt like a rabbit caught in the gaze of a fox, a hungry fox at that, and her heart began to thunder in her chest. Only Naruto had ever made her feel like this. Not at all Itachi said before moving away and letting Naruto take his spot. Naruto stepped closer, placing one hand on Hinata's waist and taking her other hand in his own. Hinata's spare hand rested on his shoulder, and their gazes never broke as they began to sway and dance with one another, finding the suitable rhythm for the music and for themselves. Naruto then decided to say fuck etiquette to Helen back. His hand moved more firmly around Hinata's waist, and he pulled her closer, close enough he could smell the slight smell of lavenders and vanilla coming from Hinata, and her breasts pressed against his chest. Hinata's heartbeat rose incredibly, and she knew she was blushing, but she couldn't force herself to pull away. Not from Naruto. It was like she had him back, after 18 years she had her Naruto back, the Naruto that gave her the fox plushie. She leaned in a bit and laid her head on his chest a bit. Naruto could feel Kurama about to whisper something. Not now Kurama Naruto mentally thought, cutting off their link at the same time. He wanted to feel normal, if even for a four-minute song. When the song was over, Naruto stepped away. He took Hinata's hand and bowed a bit, raising her hand to his lips. While his lips barely brushed her knuckles, the way he gazed into her eyes made her stomach flutter and her heart race even more. It was almost sexual how he made that simple action. Naruto then moved away and paused as he watched some drunken chunin showing off. He used a fire release technique and ended up setting himself on fire. Naruto rolled his eyes, people laughed, gasped, screamed. He threw out a tag and activated it, a torrent of water falling on the chunin and extinguishing the flames. Some of the senior shinobi shook their heads, not that Naruto blamed them. But it did give him an idea. Naruto left the party and headed to a local liquor store. When he entered, he noticed the shopkeeper eyeing him wearily, and for good reason too. He had been running the store for years and knew exactly who the blonde was. I want two bottles of your finest sake. Naruto said. Our finest? The man asked surprised. Naruto nodded once. I want Tsunade herself to be knocked out by the potency of the sake. He told him. The man seemed to think about it before he pulled a metal case from under the counter and set it on top. He pulled from it two bottles of glowing sake. Naruto blinked twice. It's glowing. Why is it glowing? He asked. He wanted the finest and he was damn sure that was going to be it. This is made from the finest of ingredients. The rice used from the formation process is from the wilds in the mountains of Kumo, where they hold the highest starch content per mass. The water used to make it is the icebergs off the coasts of spring because it will have nothing in it. The water is then sent to Iwa, where they mix in an exact amount of magnesium, potassium, and phosphoric acid to give the yeast plenty of nutrients for the making process. Not even I know the amounts used. The rice is sent to Kiri where it is polished to remove all the proteins and fats, leaving behind only the starch. The process makes Kiri quite a bit of money for those after high quality sake rice. Naruto held up a hand to stop the man. You could have just said it was made from such fine ingredients that it glows from the blessing of Kami herself. The man paused for a second. It said that it glows because there is a drop of the legendary hero's water in each bottle. One drop. That had Naruto's attention. He had heard of the hero's water and knew that was some tough shit. I'll take them both. He said and paid the man the massive cost for both bottles. He would keep one for his private stash. The other, he planned to drink and use for something fun. Over the next week, Naruto continued to train once more, ignoring the talk going around town about what happened to Kiba's party. Of course, Naruto missed the last bit of it, but that wasn't too bad. He had wanted to miss the last part. As Naruto was returning one day he heard a shrill cry from the sky and looked up to see a hawk circling around overhead. He raised his right arm and the hawk dived down to land on his arm. It stuck its leg out, having a small scroll on it that Naruto retrieved. Naruto, meet me at the site of our last battle. Sasuke the message was brief and straight to the point. It seemed that Sasuke already knew that he had been released from prison. Go back to your master. He told the hawk before throwing his arm into the air, releasing the hawk. Naruto then headed home, grabbing the prepared supplies and a bottle of his fancy sake. As he started to walk towards the valley of the end, he took a few swigs, enjoying the burn as he thought back to that fateful day. 
one of them wouldn't be walking away from the battle this time. Naruto held every advantage in this particular fight. That didn't mean he was going to let his guard down, but Sasuke didn't realize what he was capable of in terms of sealing. As Naruto arrived, he put the bottle on his hip, having only swigged about a third of it down. There, sitting on the head of the Shadai Hokage was Ichi Sasuke. His hair had grown out to about the middle of his shoulder blades, and he wore a set of Akatsuki robes. He turned his head at Naruto's presence, and Naruto looked into the Sharingan eyes. Sasuke wouldn't use a Jinjutsu on Naruto, it would be too easy. In a long time Sasuke. Naruto said simply as he leaned against a tree. Sasuke nodded, looking back over the water. 18 years since we had our last fight Naruto. Your brother has a family. Naruto said, watching as Sasuke tightened the hand that was at the end of the hilt of his sword. Kids. Sasuke asked, wondering if he was an uncle. Do, twins. One girl, one boy. Makoto and Shisui. Naruto said for Sasuke's benefit and saw the man not a bit at his words. Do they call me Oji-san? Sasuke asked, somewhat curiously, but still with that passiveness. Yes, and they both have their second tomo to their Sharingan eyes. Naruto said. Good strong kids, from strong genes. Sasuke said before he stood up and turned to look at Naruto. They looked at each other for a while, almost playing the entire battle in their heads. I owe Itachi Naruto said suddenly. And in respect to being my teammate so long ago, I'm offering you this one chance to surrender. After this, I will fight to kill as my contract wants me to. Sasuke looked down to his feet. I can't Naruto. I'm sure you understand. Naruto pushed off the tree and reached behind him, grabbing his Kusurigama. Yeah, I understand. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand. Naruto then flashed ahead, and Sasuke's sword flew from his hilt. They clashed blade to blade two times before Naruto kicked Sasuke away in a move reminiscent of Zabuza. High release. Great fireball jutsu. Sasuke blew out the blast of fire at the blonde. Naruto leapt away and slung out his left hand, launching the weight of the chain through the fire and at Sasuke's mouth. Sasuke leapt away, right into Naruto's trap. The clone appeared from behind and slapped something on Sasuke's back as he grabbed Sasuke's shoulders and dropped them both to the ground, the clone's knees driving into Sasuke's spine before the clone monkey flipped Sasuke away, rolling up over his head and into a push-up position. Seal. Naruto shouted as he dispelled his clone. Sasuke's eyes lost focus as he landed and his hand went to the tag on his back, cursing a bit. A seal to block the Sharingan. Sasuke asked. Yeah, lasts for 30 minutes. Let's see if you can keep up without your pink eye. Naruto said before launching off of the head of the Shadai Hokage, he wound the Kusurigama around an arm as he reached into both tag pouches on his hips. He then threw out dozens in either direction, all along the river. Almost instantly, the tags went to work, exploding into a thick coating of ice, freezing the water for a large portion of the river they were at. Sasu cursed. That removed water release jutsu, period. He did not have that level of chakra to have one break through the ice. Chidori current. He shouted before leaping into the air after Naruto, his sword drawn and electricity arsing off of his body. Naruto twisted in midair, clashing the Kusurigama against Sasuke's sword. Naruto landed on Madara's chest piece while Sasuke landed on the frozen waterfall. Sasuke flipped through the three hand seals for the Chidori and raced at Naruto with it, digging a gouge in the waterfall that was quickly repaired by the rushing water and the cold temperatures of the ice. Naruto dropped down and in midair, kicked Sasuke away, his leg having more reach than Sasuke's arm. But at the same time, Naruto threw some sake into Sasuke's face, splashing the potent alcohol at Sasuke's mouth. Sasuke landed at the Shadai Hokage and paused, sniffing a bit. Sake, he said softly. That removed fire release jutsu. It would be stupid to try and do one while he had sake on his face. But looking up at the sky, he could feel the storm brewing. Sasuke swung his arm in a sweeping blast. Chidori Senban. He called out, launching the attack at Naruto who quickly dodged it. The blonde had flashed onto the ice, and Sasuke charged up a second Chidori and charged at him. Naruto saw the Chidori, and with a flick of his hand, he had spun up a Rasengan, charging ahead and driving it into Sasuke's jutsu, pushing back. Naruto then gave Sasuke a headbutt, not willing to back down from their fight. Sasuke charged electricity to his sword and stepped forward, swinging it and watching the blonde block with the Kusurigama. Sasuke had done some work in the past using the unorthodox weapon, and the way the blonde was using it was different. Not unheard of, but definitely a less effective way until you mastered the weapon. Most users spun the weight around and used that to disarm their opponents. Naruto was using it like Hanzo the Salamander had used it, going with slashes of the sickle part of the weapon instead. Naruto would also spin that part around in a lethal dance, forcing Sasuke back from the weapon. Sasuke ducked under a blast of wind chakra from Naruto's weapon, watching as the blonde seemed to skate along the ice. 
Sasuke had to admit, Naruto had gotten a lot better since their last fight. Sasuke leapt away, going up the waterfall and standing at the top. This is my own personal technique Naruto. You have proven worthy to die by it. Sasuke raised his hand to the bring storm clouds, the lightning crackling above. Naruto laughed and held his hand behind him, a clone appearing and beginning to run his hands in a circular motion. Then allow me to show you the completed version of the Rasengan. Naruto said. It would be a clash of jutsu, something the blonde had made sure was limited in the battle. Naruto saw the beast form as his own jutsu was spun up, the ominous sound of the Rasen shuriken making it difficult to hear. The high wind speeds blew his blonde hair into his face. Disappear with the thunder. Kirin. Sasuke shouted. Wind release. Rasen shuriken. Naruto shouted, launching his arm out at the beast, just as Sasuke drove down his arm. Naruto was pushed back by the whirling winds and brought both arms up into a cross block. Blood dripped from both arms as the Rasen shuriken unleashed its razor-like blades of wind. He was close to the blast radius. Kirin had traveled faster than he could have possibly imagined. Sasuke watched as the launched attack collided with the Kirin and grinded against it, despite the strength of his Kirin. Finally, the orb destabilized and blew up, blasting through the ice and cracking it all the way up to the waterfall, both of the jutsu being beaten. Sasuke didn't want to think of a stronger version of that Rasen shuriken. It was already so dangerous. Sasuke looked down to the hurt blonde who held his kusurigama at the ready. Sasuke nodded. It would be their final clash, period. He grabbed the hilt of his sword and charged down the waterfall. Naruto dashed across the water and ice, almost racing at Sasuke. Sasuke got to the bottom of the waterfall, and his eyes connected with Naruto's blue eyes. They stopped just after one another, both of their arms extended in a slash. Lightning coursed along Sasuke's sword before dimming away. Neither of them moved. Naruto coughed up blood, and it splattered from the wound on his chest, staining the ice red. Sasuke slumped onto his knees, before his body fell forward and his lower half falling back. He was bisected by the blonde's kusurigama channeling the wind chakra. Blood was quickly pooling out, and he knew he wouldn't live, even if Tsunade herself was to come down from the heavens and heal him. Naruto stood back up, grunting in pain as he did so. Sasuke's sword cut deep and he could see the bone of his ribs. No doubt he'd have another scar for the rest of his life. Ob Sasuke whispered from his position, trying to roll over. Naruto heard the old nickname and went over, helping Sasuke roll over. Team he said, looking down at Sasuke. Sasuke offered a weak smirk. Never thought I'd be glad to hear that stupid nickname. Naruto shook his head at Sasuke's actions. I have one request before you end me. Naruto nodded. Anything. He said simply. Sasuke licked his lips. Make that too. Give me a swig of that glowing sake. Naruto rolled his eyes a bit and offered Sasuke a drink of the potent stuff, watching Sasuke enjoy it for a moment. My eyes give them to Itachi. Sasuke said and breathed out. Naruto nodded and stood up. He slashed the sickle down and cut through Sasuke's throat, killing him quickly and taking his head. Naruto then sealed the head away and started the long trek back to Konoha. That fight hadn't done anything good for him. When Naruto got paid for his duties after Sakura confirmed it was Sasuke, Naruto took the preserved eyes and had them put into a storage seal. He walked through the streets of Konoha, heading towards the last place he ever thought he would go to. Naruto pushed open the gate to the Ichiha compound. Naruto went up to the door and knocked firmly but politely. He was surprised to see Mikoto open the door, and she waved. Naruto Oji-san. She cried out and tackled his legs. He reached down and patted her on the back a bit. Is your two-san in? Naruto asked. What do you want with Itachi-kun? Naruto's eyes were drawn to the civilian woman he met, and her green eyes were focused on him like he was someone evil. Naruto scratched his cheek a bit. Look, either you can let me in because I have business with Itachi, or we can discuss it in front of your nine-year-old daughter, who shouldn't be hearing stuff like what I'm going to talk to Itachi about. Naruto said bluntly. The woman watched Naruto for a while before turning away. His study is down the hall, third door on the left. Mikoto, go do your homework. I don't think Chijiro-sensei will appreciate you slacking off in the academy. Hi Kasan. Mikoto called out before racing away. Naruto stepped in and slid his sandals off before walking down to Itachi's study. Naruto knocked before he was admitted, and he saw Itachi wrist deep in paperwork. He had a good portion less than most clans. Ah, Naruto-kun, what can I do for you? Itachi asked, turning to face the blonde. Naruto glanced around the study, making sure Shisui wasn't there before he locked the door, obviously concerning Itachi with his actions. Naruto took the scroll out and unsealed Sasuke's eyes and set them on Itachi's desk. It was Ichiha Sasuke's last wish that Ichiha Itachi received his eyes. With that, Naruto turned and walked out, done with that little errand. He heard the near-silent sobs of Itachi and wished he could have done something else. 
what if Naruto bankrupts Konoha Council bashing, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.